Hello, everybody. Welcome to Eden Fractal meeting number 21. We are uh, starting the recording a little bit late. We're going to break out into breakout rooms in seven minutes. And it's Eric's first time here. And Eric was just talking extra about lots of exciting things that we've done, like interviews with Dr. Sharif and exploring the metaverse and so forth. So yeah, I just figured I'd start recording and welcome everybody, but I don't want to interrupt the conversation. Uh, and I was enjoying it. So please feel free to carry on or if any of you would like to share any thoughts before we start uh, breakout rooms then feel free to share yeah i'm not, I'm not going to be able to get on video today i'm sorry it's i'm lucky that i even was able to make it okay thanks for uh sharing and thanks for joining cc um uh, i hope the new job is going well it is what it is All right. Hey, I wanted to, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if we could figure out, I guess, I don't know, co-hosting abilities, or I, I do think we need to start to, uh, with these breakout rooms, the, the one flaw with the randomization, Dan, <clears throat> I think we need to figure that out as far as now that we're getting bigger, having multiple people co-host so we can vet to make sure that and finding a way to have make making sure that you're randomized into a group instead of picking. Um, so I'd like to try that around this route. I'm not sure how you guys would like to proceed, but I just that's been something that's been on my mind that I think we need to get figured out. Yeah, thanks, Felix. Um, I agree, and I, I've thought about this quite a lot. I'm not sure what the best solution is yet. Um, I don't know if it's a uh, a very big priority. I think that that the other things that we're doing are hard priority, so I haven't focused on it or brought it up yet. Um, and in most times, like the host just gets basically one choice, and there there really shouldn't be a choice, but they just go into the room that has a free spot. But especially also with the new Eden Plus Fractal um, system that we're doing. The host has the ability to choose different rooms and that gives whoever is the zoom host more power to affect like the results of the uh, elected delegates in addition to respect this person so forth so and in some situations i have like made a choice like if there was like a couple new people in a room and there was two rooms i can go into then I chose the room with the with a couple new people so i could be more welcoming and stuff and that was just kind of a subjective decision um, which I think was for the best, but at the same time, like that also does have uh, potential risk for the community, especially as we use these, uh, as we grow and we use Eden Plus Practical and so forth. I thought about maybe using a system where we can like just verify that the host always goes in the odd number or like the, like the lowest number, like always go in room one if room one is available and always go in room two if room two is available, but not room one and so forth. But I'm not sure if that's possible to verify. And I'm not sure if, making a second host or co-host would solve that problem. Um, there's also the possibility of using the Eden election software, which has the randomization with the Bitcoin blockchain built in. Um, and I think that we might want to use that anyway for uh, purposes with the Eden plus factor process, but that's also much more complex too. Um, and I suppose we could also use a randomizer outside of Zoom's randomizer too. Like we could just like a share a screen and then use a randomizer. Um, but there's a lot of considerations there. So I'm not sure what is the best next step. Um, I'd be curious if, if you have thought, more thoughts about that, Felix, or if anybody has more thoughts. We only have a few minutes aside here, so perhaps we can discuss it uh, later as well. But um, that's basically my thoughts there right now. And thanks, Felix, for bringing it up. Yeah, uh, I, I would think probably just it wouldn't hurt to, to give whoever would like co-host because then you can see the breakout rooms. Um, and then that just adds a little bit layer of trans transparency. Um, and then from there, like we can get a little bit more specific. Like one thing is whoever wants to be co-host before the breakout rooms, like one, once they've been assigned, whoever is still remains co-host, we can stay in the main room, do a quick randomizer for the room that you would, the, the rooms available as an option that that's more complex, but I think first steps would be just opening it up to co-hosts to be able to see the rooms that are being broken out. Because uh, from there, there is a way to at least be able to transparency, see what you're you're seeing. Um, and then to see if like, oh, okay, well, 
this meeting, Dan had a choice and he chose this room. Um, you know, and then I ideally get to a point where there is no choice. It's just, it's random, just like everybody else's. Right. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, there's also a trade off like, uh, um, that we just have to make sure that, that we trust everybody who's hosts because they also have, you know, power to do more things too. But I think that we trust everybody. Um, I suppose that I could make more people co host right now. We could try it out now if, if we like. Uh, would you like to be a co host right now, Felix? So you can check it out. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay. Okay. And the, yeah, we only have one minute left too. Um, so for, for Eric and Sipiku, um, I figure maybe I should give just a brief introduction of what we'll do for the next, uh, for, for this breakout room and so forth. Sound good? Or does anybody have anything else you'd like to share? Okay, cool. And once again, sorry if I'm, um, okay, cool. Thank you, Sadiqa. And once again, sorry if I am mispronouncing your name. Feel free to correct me. But uh, basically, yep, as our, as Patrick just shared in chat, we're going to do 55 minutes of breakout room. So in a, about a minute or maybe two minutes, we're going to break out into breakout rooms randomly. As uh, Felix and I were just talking about breakout rooms of um, five to six people, there might be, we only have 13 people right now, so there might be groups of four. Um, so breakout rooms of group to four to six people who are randomly in groups, and then we'll be in that group for 55 minutes until about 1410 UTC or 1411 UTC. And during that uh, breakout room, we'll reach consensus about two different things. Um, one, we'll use the fractally process and rank contributions um, uh, that each person is doing for the community. Basically, each person will get three or four or five minutes to share what they've been doing to help the community. That can be the EOS community, the Eden community, or also I know we have people from WAX here as well. Um, so you can just share an introduction uh, 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 of yourself or what you're doing in general to help these communities. And then after everybody shares their uh, their introduction and their contributions and, and what they're doing to work, then the group will come to consensus about ranking people's contributions uh, to say, okay, this person did the most for the community. So they get level six is the highest contribution and person who did the second most would get level five with the second highest contribution and so forth. And then if the group reached a consensus, then everybody will get more, uh, then people will get more respect and EOS depending on what level they get, level five or level six or level one or level two and so forth. And then during the same room, we'll also elect a delegate to help make community decisions for the next week with the new Eden plus fractal process. Um, so we'll elect both giving respect and giving EOS and so forth to each other um, or ranking contributions, which disperses the EOS and respect and then also electing a delegate to make community decisions. And then after 55 minutes, then we'll meet back up in this breakout room and we'll have uh, open community discussions. We'll uh, talk about proposals probably. And also uh, if any people want to share uh, some of their experiences, especially new people, then that would also be cool too. But that's basically kind of like the agenda. Any questions? Felix also just shared the link to the voting app where we vote. That's a really good app that uh, Vlad has been building that makes it simple to vote onto EOS. Does everybody have uh, EOS accounts? Eric and Sapiku? Apologies, I was muted. Um, I don't have any questions. I, I, I don't have any answers or questions yet. So <laughs> I'm going to just sit in and then the, the questions will be created, of course. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. How did yes, you get here? Uh, how do you say your name? Sepiku or? Sepiku. Sepiku. Yes. How, how'd you get here? Or how'd you hear I, about the Infractal? Uh, Lisa Chandler? Uh, we okay, were on nice. an early DACathon together, and um, we meet up in the communities all the all the time. Um, 
in Twitter spaces and, and, and those things. Uh, I support artists on the WAX platform. I, I have a, not an NFT art gallery inside of Metaverses. Yeah, she runs an awesome Twitter space that uh, I was able to join one time. It was great. Sweet, nice to have you here. Welcome. Thank you, thank you for the invite. Absolutely. Okay, we're a couple minutes over now, so I will start the breakout rooms. Um, and then, yeah, if you have any questions during the break uh, during the breakout room, then feel free to ask the people who you're with. We'll have three breakout rooms with four to five people, and then if more people join, then that's cool too. And I will open all rooms now. Hope everybody has a great time. Um, I'll join. There's two rooms with groups of four, so I'll join room number two. Um, which is the first one. Hey everyone. Hey. Hey guys. Good morning. Good morning. Was that a guitar in your background, Eric? Do you play? I haven't played for a while, but yeah, I I did that. Music was a big part. I used to play all kinds of bizarre things. I even got on stage once and played the flute, and I'm not a flute player. So that's <laughs> Very cool. I, I love to hear that. At an electronic music concert, so it was through digital delays and things way back when. It sounds awesome. I imagine that that you tore it up and 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 you gave the most amazing flute electronic performance of all time. It, it was definitely something nobody had heard before. <laughs> <laughs> Having been on call with Eric, he's been into a little bit of everything. So whatever, whatever, you, whatever topic you got, I'm sure Eric's got a story. <laughs> yeah, the, the the worst thing any quest, the worst thing anybody can ask me for that that gives me, freaks me out as a resume because I don't have these, you know, thirty years software engineering with. It's like, you no, know, every every part of business all over the place. Don't 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 play don't downplay the marketing, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Eric and Extra Van Not Host, I don't know if I pronounced your name co correctly, sorry if I just scratch it, but um, I never seen you before, so are you new or can you briefly introduce yourself? Uh, I, I will introduce myself, obviously. Well, I, I'm new, I'm new uh, to Eden, Eden Fractal, but I've been with uh, Go Fractal -y for months and part of the a alien worlds okay. fractal and i run a uh i've been doing a podcast i had some i was supposed to start editing the episodes a couple weeks ago but i had some medical things so this week is all about editing and some people okay, no, in this, the is, uh, this wasn't the it was just uh, to know your name and like oh. uh, if you where did you heard about like you know, fractal etc it's, it's not i heard about the go fractally from Dwayne phillips okay because i've been part of the crown group for a while okay thank you yeah similarly i mean you can just call me extra i mean okay. that's my name so that works uh oh. i know eric from the alien world fractally and some other stuff um Similarly, you know, I've known Dwayne uh, and Max um, over at Alien Worlds for years and years uh, since we met at an EOS uh, Block Producer Summit uh, in San Francisco. Um, and so, similar to what Eric was saying, Dwayne got me involved in Fractally through Alien Worlds. Um, okay. So, like, I'm an Eden member and so forth. And, um, yeah, and I can go into more detail when we get to the introductions and so forth. But yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So Dan, I don't know. I don't know if you want to start right now or you want to go first. Uh... 
Yeah, I think it's good to start. And I'm happy to go first if you'd like to, if anybody else would like to. Yeah. And that's cool. But I'll also just say uh, both Eric and Extra, as I mentioned, um, they participate in the Alien Worlds Fractal often. Eric is also on most of the calls that Joshua hosts at 18 UTCN every weekday, where we talk about fractal governance and we talked about more equal animals recently and so forth. Um, so, and then the Alien Worlds Fractal is at 16 UTC every Wednesday, every Thursday that Dwayne hosts too. So it's a great way to get to know him there as well. But yeah, thanks guys for joining. Yeah, thank you. All right. Would anybody like to go first, sharing contributions and so forth? I know Tadas has been quiet, so maybe if Tadas would like to lead it. Sure, I can start. Uh, yeah, so for those who uh, don't know, my main contribution to Eden Fractal is Albedo Project. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, about how fractals can uh, be totally autonomous and uh, create synergies with existing blockchains uh, without depending on them too much. Uh, and uh, yes, a few weeks ago, I published an an article called Fractal Chains. And uh, yeah, I'm currently focusing on that, how uh, I'm planning to create a proof of concept for this Pomelo season of Albedo. Uh, and I'm currently uh, uh, doing some research on what technologies to use. I uh, found some interesting projects like Hypercore, uh, which uh, is basically a peer-to-peer -peer network, uh, which an enables a lot of uh, a lot of uh, powerful peer-to-peer -peer applications. And this is relevant for this fractal chains idea because it would allow uh, to uh, to create, for example, uh, fractal style meetings in a totally peer-to-peer -to -peer way and uh, perform the voting process and building of blocks for fractal chain in a totally decentralized and uh, uh, totally decentralized and peer-to-peer -peer way and uh, also without any dependencies on other blockchains. Uh, although after the block, fractal block is created, it could be published in, into existing blockchains and that way will, it will, uh, fractal can integrate with uh, existing blockchain. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's roughly what I'm working on right now. Uh, yeah, and uh, I will maybe pass it on to Nicola. All right, thank you, thank you, Tadas. Um, I can share my screen, I guess. Uh, uh, so I will introduce uh, myself to Eric and, and Extra because they are new. So my name is Nicholas. I'm one of the builder bees at uh, the bees uh, run by Jesse Jaffe. So I'm working with him. And so briefly introduce what we are doing at the bees. So we created a technology which we call Swarm, um, which is a technology that we built, uh, which is in practice the ability to bring huge amount of engagement uh, very quickly on any tweets uh, out of basically from our clients, which is right now mainly uh, <laughs> the EOS community. Um, and EOS projects. Um, so this uh, those one has many external effects, which I'm not going to tell them all now because it's just the subject of the matter. Um, so my contribution is basically the same each week. So we, thanks to the Pomelo funds we get uh, from the Pomelo crowdfunding, we created an initiative that is called uh, Swarm, which uh, offers a free swarm to EOS project um, project that's inside the EOS community. And so anyone can participate with those subsidized swarm and anyone can apply and have a tweet they want uh, to gain uh, likes and retweet uh, for free. So they just order them. So my contribution is basically working on activating those swarms. Uh, we did this last, so last seven days, we did a swarm for the Eden Korea uh, for this tweet uh, because it was the first. Um, uh first one and so you can see the engagement uh we also did one uh for uh nova crypto um about until to switch for uh workshop sorry uh sorry it's loading <laughs> i don't know why um and the okay this one this was for helios i believe 
We did also some for Helios, uh, but the hackathon, um, and also this one from Nova Crypto. And then we swarm last week. We swarm two um, two two if allows tweets. Uh, this one and this one. And so, yeah, basically this is my contribution as part of uh, as part of USBs and BBs. So yeah, thank you. So Dan, if you want to, to go next, uh, you can go. Yep, sounds great. Thank you very much, Nicola. Does anybody have any questions for Nicola or Tadasa before I go? Or thoughts? Maybe the question after everyone made the, the presentation, maybe I think it's better so that I sure everyone has the time, maybe. Okay, sounds great. All right, so I'll share a little presentation um, about things I've been doing. Uh, so one of the main things that I did this week was I put out a new article. Uh, it's at edencreators.com slash agenda. And this article talks about um, protocols for setting the agenda of meetings like this for Eden and Eden Fractal. And then also it can be used for other communities too. And in addition to setting the agenda, also for deliberating proposals, reviewing proposals, making proposals and approving or rejecting proposals for the community. So I, I made some art here with, with a little clock in space and wrote a little introduction, made some table of contents with, um, different oh, sorry i just realized that i didn't start my timer so i don't go too long i'll set a timer now um but yeah basically i, I put a little table of contents this wound up being a little bit of a bigger project than I, I originally expected so i wrote some sections about the importance of scheduling eden and how DAOs make decisions as a community with many leaders some kind of introductory parts about this and just just reflecting upon what we're doing in general. And they also reflected upon what we've been doing to cooperate so far with the practically process and the Eden process and how that helps us create public goods like videos and tools and inspiration networking. And um, also linked to a bunch of different articles that I've written recently about interim processes and consensus and signals and the new Eden plus Fractal process that Tadas created and that we're doing now. Uh, and then I also linked to it again here. And then also I, um, curated proposals. So last week, there were six proposals regarding how to make time decisions and make agenda and make proposal decisions and delivery proposals last week. So there's lots of proposals and I felt like it was helpful. Uh, people had lots of different ideas to curate it. So I curated and, and, and wrote a little bit summarizing here and I curated screenshots with Vlad's proposal. And then I found timestamps from when Vlad gave his proposal. Um, and I did this for basically each proposal that was out there as well as responses. I just took screenshots of all the responses. I shared responses. I just worked on just asking a few thoughtful questions and ran some thoughtful feedback for each proposal. I also did it for Tadas' proposal as well, where you can see here and you can see Tadas propose it. And then some comments from both myself and Vlad here with proposals and Lenny's proposal. And then I made a response to Lenny here and then Felix's proposal and then timestamp. And then I made a response to Felix. And then I also shared several proposals last week that I organized a little bit here as well in two articles from last week called Consortium and Time. And I also shared Jesse's proposal. And then I made some recommendations about where I think we're at with exploring these proposals and the possibility of merging proposals or innovating them more. And uh, also kind of reminding that these are guides and that these are signals to the community and uh, exploring potential interfaces we can use to better schedule time and some next steps. And then lately I've been uh, adding a bunch of related posts in my articles as well. So I've been writing a lot of these articles on the edencreators.com site, and now a lot of them are getting nicer so I can include and link to them. And I think it can provide a a pretty engaging and insightful experience for people who join and want to learn about these things. I also put together some pages for what is a public good. Uh, there's a lot of kind of draft pages that I'm working on here. Um, I also put together a page for Pomelo recently, and I recorded a little video where I played guitar, and then I talked about Pomelo a little bit, and then I just curated some other Pomelo content. So these are some of the things I'm working in the background as kind of a grand scheme, or I don't know, scheme is probably not the right word, but as as a central source to learn about Eden and public goods and EOS and so forth. I also redid some of the pages about videos, about how Eden Fractal makes great videos, and this week I also put out a... Um, message saying that I'm willing to pay EOS for great timestamps. And I also, past few weeks, I've been making nicer thumbnails and some basic timestamps, but I put out a message and made communication with four different people about getting timestamps for all these videos. Um, and I'm also working on a page. Ooh, I forgot to include this page, actually, but I'm working on a page called 
uh, dams, edencreators.com slash dams, which is about like how we can make great videos as a community, basically, um, and do it in this novel, decentralized way. So edencreators.com slash dams, all these pages are in development, but basically it's a new way for people to collaborate, making awesome videos, decentralized autonomous movie studios, and there's lots of resources here. So I'm just kind of showing you a broad overview, but there's lots of articles that are in development that are all coming together. And I'm going to be curating all the different videos in the Eden and EOS community and uh, WAX community too, so people can see it. And then yeah, I updated tooling page as well. Um, and inspiring page is showing how Eden Fractal is helping create public goods. And last week, I also um, worked on the Eden plus Fractal page as well, which I've been continuing to work on to provide more details about this new process that we adopted. And then I also, as I said, I published this video. I hosted the event last week and edited it a little bit here and there and added a nice intro. And then I also hosted the town hall this week as well. I haven't published the 21st meeting yet, but I'm working on that and we'll share that soon. And I've been doing a similar thing with some timestamps and nice production and so forth. So I think I'll leave it there. And thank you everybody for listening. Sorry if that was a bit long. And I'll pass it on to, I guess, Eric. So the, the first thing I always do with anything is say, how do I make myself a better agent by learning? So I actually started researching Eden and looking through the Eden and Eden uh, and EOS stuff. I actually posted that and added that into a research paper. I'm working on my doctoral degree. And so I submitted that to some other students and my professor. The second thing I do is say, how can I uh, share? So I actually shared um, uh, things about Eden with, uh, with besides my professor and other students, with my mentor for iValue Global, which is a consulting group. So the, my, my main focus, just so you know, is actually to deliver capability to an actually working organization. Let's just do it. So a lot of what I've been doing is saying, how do we stack up all the pieces and do that. So I made a proposal to say, let's actually build and document the diagram, how this works. And my mentor said, yeah, let's do it. And then working with Josh Seymour this week, we talked about actually working as a group to actually build out to say, not just what's great about Eden, but to say, if you were going to take this group that we're using, which is an art association, as an example, just a case study, how do we stack up the pieces between strategy, between organizations that are developed between all the research and development stuff like Val and Tadas is working and how do you actually approach organizations and have the agents where you go out and you get them started to to do that um so uh shared that and then I did the uh live stream that talks about the metaverse and um if anybody here has a topic they want to talk about this is part of that metaverse glad to have the discussion we do it every Monday um and uh, glad to do that. Uh, also, uh, I started a podcast, Building the Metaverse. I was going to edit that, start editing. I've done 10 episodes, and now I'm going to edit them and release them. Had a couple weeks delay, so I'm back to editing this week. And some people, like Patrick, have actually been guests on that. Lisa Chandler has actually been guest on that. So if somebody has a podcast episode they want me to interview, glad to do that, uh, too. Uh, but the big thing is I'm actually doing this as a project for my doctoral dissertation, which will be done in 2023. And so that's what I want to do is actually take this and do the impact of governance and DAO on actually uh, group motivation coordination and actually document that somehow. So with that, I will pass that. Oh, and of course, member of the uh, uh Genesis Fractal, the um, co-host with Josh Seymour on his stuff and part of the Alien World Fractal. So with that, I will pass that to Extra. Are you passing that to me, Eric? Yeah. So first, Eric, I want to I wanna follow up on that. I know we had talked about this before. I definitely want to reconnect uh because i'd like to do that podcast as we talked about a few weeks ago and reconnect on some of the other stuff we had talked about you know um to your to your point a minute ago i've been dealing with the medical stuff too which is why i've been kind of mia recently uh, but i would love to um revisit that top those topics that we were discussing 
you know, maybe, you know, a month ago or so forth, you know, if, if, if you're still open to that. Um, sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, and I, and I know you've had Steve, I know you've had, you know, my business partner, Steve, you know, on, on the, on the podcast as well, We're talking about maybe one of his, one of our kind of, you know, sister businesses, if you will, you know, that he started, you know, so maybe, you know, our topic could be a little bit different uh, than specifically what he had talked about, right. Which obviously dovetails very closely. Um, so I know Dan and Eric and Eric have heard this before. Um, but anyway, um, you know, my main business is a company called LD2. Uh, and Nicholas, we talked with Jesse, uh, for two hours about Swarm, uh, last Friday, uh, and about, and about some other, okay. some other things that he's working on that I think my business partner, Steve, that Eric was referring to, uh, could help you, could help with. Um, not necessarily related to Swarm, but I guess some some other sort of inelastic search and some some other things that, that I think that I think he's doing. Um, so that was a very interesting conversation, and I was actually very impressed with Swarm. And he sent me a proposal, so we're going to review that and, and and you know see if that works for us um, and so forth. So I appreciate you know, kind of your kind of like very quick overview about that. Um, so there seems like there's a lot of synergies uh you know in this group um uh, overall right um anyway so like i said uh i run a company with my partner uh called ld2 you know our real approach is to bring you know real world physical assets to the digital world right and mer merge the two together um and so we started with a fungible ERC-20 token, uh, all backed by physical silver, uh, based on a model that my dad invented in 1998, uh, where he did physical certificates, bills backed by physical silver. Uh, and then he did a digital version, electronic version of his currency uh, in 2003. Uh, which was really the first, which was one of the very first times that um, digital tokens were represented by physical assets. Uh, and we use a completely different model than anybody else in the world. Uh, we use the warehouse receipt model. So you buy the silver up front and the token that you get, uh, whether it be an ERC like we started with, or now we have wax tokens, uh, is the receipt for the ownership of that silver. Uh, so you're not buying tokens with the promise of a backing. You're buying the physical asset. And like I said, the token is the receipt for it. So if you trade the receipt, if you trade the tokens, um, then the ownership of the silver goes with it. Uh, and you can redeem it as little as one ounce anytime you want uh, by just turning in that receipt, uh, just like you would anywhere else. Um, and so we, like I said, we started with an ERC-20 token in 2018. Uh, we eventually decided to leave Ethereum and we migrated all of that silver and all the smart contracts to WAX. So we did uh, a WAX based, you know, fungible token uh, similar to the ERC. And then the decision was just, you know, then we decided to like layer an NFT on top of it. So now through my partner's company, uh, you can now back NFTs on the WAX blockchain with the fungible token, which is backed by the physical silver, which essentially is backing an NFT with physical silver that is 100% redeemable uh, at any time you want. Uh, so we're working with um, Alien Worlds, um, and we've been approved or I guess accepted into their grant program through Galactic Hubs to provide the very first platform to allow NFTs on Alien Worlds to be backed by physical assets. Uh, so that's probably going to be announced. I mean, they've already announced it technically, but it's probably going to be functional here in the next couple weeks to a month at the very latest. Um, and so 
that's really, you know, our focus as related to the alien worlds, you know, area, which is why Eric and I are both groups of, you know, the alien worlds fractally. Um, when it comes to Eden, that's kind of a new avenue for me. Uh, like I said, Dwayne, you know, introduced me to, to Eden, you know, a few months ago. Um, and just like with Alien Worlds, it to me, I don't necessarily like do the posts, you know, that Dan does, which are so impressive. And I love the fact that he has a presentation every week. Um, I, I just talk to like more people that I know that are crypto people, uh, having been in it for a long time about the new things that are coming up. So that would be my main contribution. Um, is not necessarily these blog posts or these um, podcasts or so forth that Eric and, and Dan are doing. I, I look at it more like I'm just going to talk to people that I know about it uh, and try to get them engaged um, and involved because I think there is a huge upside to this. And I don't know if people really even know this sort of thing, or a lot of the crypto people I know, should I say, don't even know this sort of thing exists. Um, so just like the alien world fractally, with Eden fractally, you know, this few this last week I've talked to, you know, a half dozen different people that I know, uh, crypto people, about hey, why don't you get involved in this? You know, there's no real downside to you; it's only upside. And you never know where it's going to go, which is kind of the, the lesson of my being crypto for the last 10 years is, right? Which is get in at some point and as early as possible is best because you don't know what it's going to let, where it's going to go. Anyway, so I'll, 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 I'll leave it at that and open up any questions if you guys got any. Thank you. Thank you, Extra. Um, yes, yeah, so if anyone has question to anyone uh, just ask there uh, now and and after that we're gonna vote i just want to um, say to Estra and eric so the voting about the ranking of the contributions contribution is based on the contribution you made for like the eos uh, community or eden it's uh, it's related to eos uh, so if you are voted like uh, you are voted lower uh, this makes sense because you are new and so this is why it's a great thing that you introduce yourself what you do etc and your contribution to other projects this makes sense because you are new uh, but just, I just want to to warn you like this is this is basically the voting based on EOS contribution so it makes sense so just want to well I think, that, I think you know just to, to not, just my point over I think Eric and I have been on you know the alien world fractally for quite a while now uh, so I think, I think he, and I, at least I do, and I would assume he does too. I think we have a pretty good understanding of kind of like how, how the voting goes, you know, okay. and that, you know, uh, I know there's been a discussion, at least in that fractally, about, you know, new people being voted lower and so forth, just because they don't, you know, you're not as familiar with the contributions that are being made. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, I think, and maybe Eric can, make a comment on this. I mean, I, I think that I'm pretty comfortable with, you know, how, you know, how the voting goes in general. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, and I know, and, I, and there's such great contributions here with, with Nickel to Doss and Dan, you know, and who can follow Dan's, you know, presentation every week. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, every and, week he's got a whole, you know, a uh, PowerPoint presentation on all the contributions he's made that week, right? I mean, that's, so, you know. <laughs> so, so, so mostly what I did this week was I've got a pretty strong foundation. And I just said, last week, we talked about Eden and, and how, did, and all I really did is said, how do I build a framework for putting Eden into what we already do? So most of my efforts this time was just building that actual plan and engaging people into that vision of how we would find how Eden fits into this whole idea. I'm especially interested in what Tadas was talking about these tools, because I, I actually have to do this with a group who, and, and my goal is that group doesn't know anything about any of this. And I don't want them to have to, here's this value. Do you want the value? Yes, I do. Let's make it easy for you. And the fact that this is part of what runs the background should be transparent, just like the stuff 
that extra does. They don't need to know that oh, it does this and uses these protocols. I mean, I, we do, <laughs> a lot of people do, but, but my goal is, is nobody should have to worry. They just see tweets pop up and, oh yeah, swarm's a good thing. So, you know, uh, you know, our, the organization that I'm working with, their job is to accelerate the, be the, uh, uh, community art community organizer and accelerate the growth from amateurs into well-paid well-known artists and here's the key coordinate with all the other communities to make the world better through art that's business that's uh special needs that's uh, elder care that's uh, everything you can think of and so you know i just use that as a stepping stone to go then into the business communities and religious communities and you know corporate communities you know that that's how i see it so uh my point of that is uh, i'm very interested in how swarm can do that i'm very interested in how dan can help our artists and and creatives uh communicate what they do i've already talked this week with uh, seppuku 18 about integrating her digital studio with their physical studio you know, those are things I've done weak is how do we make this this real? And that's my whole focus. So my whole point in saying that is I'm very excited about all your contributions because I don't care how I rank. I just want to make your stuff go out into the real world and get used. And, and you could be all rank level six as far as I'm concerned. Because <laughs> it's all great stuff. I just need to make it you help make it usable. Yeah, but I would actually advocate for ranking Eric quite high because first of all I think this kind of approach is very useful where you have a person which is in contact with existing communities and trying to make create you real world real world use cases for factory and also where is the this thing in the uh, in a document where factory team explained the process they said that uh, uh, the high, to choose the highest contribution based on who contributed the most relative to their past contributions. And so since it's uh, Eric's first time uh, in Indian, Indian Fractal, I, I would uh, advocate for uh, ranking him higher. At least I like this rule to uh, rank relative to past contributions because it incentive, it, it rewards the uh, uh, additional efforts made uh, to 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 do more than on the previous week yeah uh, and, and just just so you know what i'm ho hoping uh, this is actually to document to give credibility so i hope this goes into dissertation and into published papers eventually yeah. so that people can say oh yeah it's it's real so that goes along with uh, what Nicholas is doing with Swarm and what Dan is doing, which is getting the network in there. There's that other dimension that I hope to capitalize on too. Yeah, and it's another way to get people to learn about Eden Fractal. So I think it's a contribution to Eden Fractal as well. Anyway, yeah, we... it, so, so it starts for taking these people where they are and leading them there as opposed to hitting them over the head with Eden Frack, which is which is valid for people like me. I'll go, oh, new, cool. Oh, this is cool. I, I'm in. Tell me all about it. But I, but I have a very balance between a business and, a you know, I start off in engineering and work for a soft, billion dollar software company for a decade. So for me, this is exciting. But for most of the world, yeah, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'll also add there too. Uh, thank you. Uh, 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 well, thank you, everybody. <laughs> so great thoughts all around and great contributions. Thank you, Nicola, for sh uh, uh, sharing your thoughts uh, um, and uh, kind of explaining the process a bit and perhaps any expectations. But then also at the same time, I agree with what Das is saying. I, I also think that Eric and Extra deserve a lot of respect. They both do awesome things throughout the community. And, um, you know, it, there's a balance and, and basically we can find out how we want to do the balance like um Nicola and Tadas have been doing great work for EOS for a while um and perhaps we can also encourage and incentivize Eric and extra to uh we'll both show our appreciation for joining this meeting and extra joined last week uh and then also incentivize them to join more with more respect but 
anyway, I think there's great perspectives overall. And thank you, everybody, for sharing. Thank you, Exer and Eric, for your interest in Eden and helping Eden and so forth. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited for everything that we're doing. Okay, so if anyone has, if no one has question, we can just start uh, the voting. And so. Uh, <laughs> um, the, 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 there's one quick question that I have uh, for Tadas. I, I just wondering, sorry if I missed it, but Tadas, uh, uh, has there been recent updates? Because I know that you uh, published the Fractal Blockchains uh, a couple of weeks ago, the, the paper. So over the past like week or so, have you been making a lot of progress with Albedo? Yeah, it's uh, mostly progress related to figuring out the tech which I will use to uh, to build the proof of concept on because uh, it doesn't make I think I need a peer-to-peer -peer network technology and I'm not I'm not going to build it myself I don't think it's worth it so I'm doing research on best tech and I figured out some very exciting projects and uh, yeah, nothing yet to to show, but uh, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to hear it's going well. I'm looking forward to seeing more updates when you're ready. Sure. So shall we get into uh, ranking contributions now? Or does anybody have any thoughts or questions beforehand? Uh, maybe share the link. Um, I will share it in the chat uh, for the site where we're going to vote. Oh. I think you can. We, I think we did it before just in the chat, right? Or are we going to yeah. use the uh, we're going to use the site? Yeah. So uh, we vote in the chat, but the final re re results we're going to have to put it in the uh, oh. portal. Uh, that what. Oh, right. Okay. I got you. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. that's what we've done before. Yeah. As we did last week. That's what we did <coughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so this so, is group, okay. this is group number two. Yes. Yes. Yep, yes. That's correct. Yeah. So we'll vote in the zoom chat right now. And then at the end of the meeting or before um, 14 UTC or rather before 15 UTC, then we'll submit it uh, here on the results oh. once we have consensus. So if you are ready, um, you just put the name uh, of the person that, uh, in your opinion, should be ranked level six. And as soon as everyone is ready and raise their hand, uh, we're just going to all press enter to see at the same time who what you call. Who. Oh, ah. sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> All right, I have a feeling I know what I will choose. <laughs> sorry, it's fine, sorry, it's fine. sorry, my bad. <laughs> okay, all good. Okay, you, some, you, 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 you have a cool light, by the way, coming on your screen right now. Extra, there's like a a, a yeah, godly yeah, light going into your heart right now. <laughs> That's a sign. Okay, I'm ready. I have a giant window next to me, and so the sun is just like peeking over. Like, <laughs> right, it, it works well. <laughs> okay. Ra raise your hand when you are ready. And, okay, uh, ready. When everyone is uh, ready, we just uh, okay. Uh, and and I think that extra is ready too. So yeah. <laughs> hope we're ready to go. I'm okay. sorry. I'm, yeah, my bad. My bad. It's, sorry, it's all good. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> Three, two, <laughs> two, one, one, go. go. Okay, Eric then. And Eric. Oh, um, I forgot. Uh, do we allow to vote for ourselves or not? I forgot to to ask. I, I think so. I think. Yeah, I think the consensus recently has been that yeah, you can vote for yourself. I think that's a. I think that's a better. Yeah. Having especially from the alien world fracture, I think we've kind of f figured out that like voting for yourself is kind of the better option. Yeah, I, I ask do. because uh, no one is uh, like sorry, uh, not everyone is uh, with that opinion. So I ask, and if the yeah. and reach a consensus in the group, so yeah, okay, all right. No, good question. No, no, definitely. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, okay. that that's a whole area of research. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but until then, I agree. So, uh, there... yeah, we haven't reached consensus because there is two votes for Dan and two for Eric. So I think it depends on extra of if anyone wants to add something while they voted for 
Oh, I don't know. If X Y want to change your, I mean, I can, I can make, I can make it easy. I can make it easy and just, uh, I mean, I, I, I know, I can, I can easily, switch, I can easily switch my vote to Dan. Well, cool. okay. okay. Um, that would still so, only do three or five. I, I also voted for Eric too. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go either way. But Eric, uh, I, I really appreciate Eric joining. Um, I, I speak with Eric most weekdays. Um, now on, on those meetings that he co-hosts often with Joshua and. Um, he brings like really great ideas and really great enthusiasm and also has a lot of fun at the meetings and makes points really well. And, and I love the way he's thinking about growing the practically process. Um, so I really appreciate Eric for everything he's doing and then joining today too. So I'd advocate, um, for Eric for number six, um, but I'm also happy to go either way. So I myself voted for Dan because, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> like uh, for obvious argument, I think Dan's doing the the most like most contribution in my opinion. So uh, I, in my opinion, I'm gonna stick with Dan. And sorry, uh, sorry, Eric, uh, um, but I stick with no, Dan. So, so you know, here's how I look at everybody, and I take notes while you're talking. And my first question is, uh, you know, the value is how do you share? because bringing people in is important. The second thing is how do you operate once you get somebody in? And the third key that I look at is, yeah, but how are you building this for now and then also in the future? And I think we tend to discount future up future things you're doing that don't have an impact right now, but will, so I give that a, a yeah, little and, bump. So, so, Eric, to, the, so Eric, for, to that point, you know, that's why I eventually voted for Tadas, right? Because I think that that like doing that kind of blockchain that the research that he's talking about is kind of that future piece, right? That, and, and I know you and I have talked about this on the alien world frankly as well, right? Which is, you know, um, even though it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's different from what Dan is doing now, right? Of getting people involved is you know that ultimate goal or that ultimate functionality going to be more impactful yeah and i, I was torn between uh, dan and tadas although i really like everything nicholas is doing too but uh the the key is right now when it comes to bringing people in and operations uh, i thought yeah. dan and had a little higher impact at the moment but i think toss tadas is doing running right now in the future so it was a really tough choice to choice for me i kind of went with my my gut in choosing but you know yeah i, I just want to say also uh but dan uh that he didn't present is that dan is is basically moderating one of those of um, those meetings like uh, every week that so that's what gave it the uh, edge uh it didn't turn yeah, whole and okay. i know it's difficult sometimes to monitor because sometimes it's those meetings are a mess i'm not gonna say names but sometimes it's just a mess yeah. i know this must be difficult so uh, this is also why i voted for them and so yeah. that, that's what gave me the push there is because the operations is it doesn't do any good if you get people in and it doesn't work people yeah. will leave <laughs> he's doing if it's not job. working yeah. so so yeah. dan is doing that glue to get this older but tadas is coming up with some of the basic foundations that are really going to make this work so it was the fact that dan is hosting all that stuff that gave it the push for me but i thought they were both well, like I said, I mean, I, I would, like... I, I would change my, I would change my vote to Dan, you know, if, the, if okay. that's going to help us get to consensus. Okay, so Works for me. So if Tada saw you, then change your vote to, to Dan, <laughs> it, we would reach consensus. Uh, so okay. I don't know. Um, great discussion. Thank you, everybody, for for all the the kind words and and thoughtfulness and so forth. Um, I think we only have something like. I don't know, 15 minutes left or so, and then we have to do all consensus uh, for both respect and delegation okay. during that time. So um, I guess um, that I'm willing to change my vote. Um, if anybody wants to change it real quick to Eric, I'd also be happy with that too. But otherwise, I see Tadash just voted for me. So, okay, I guess I'll go and accept that. And thank you very much. And we can move on to level five. Oh, can you put Dan your your second? Oh yeah, I remember it's just Dan. Yes, that's correct. Dan.
Jesus Lord, what was that even possible? Uh, okay, cool. Um, man, there's a lot of great contributions in this round. I should also give a little warning thing. So I I, I choose who I want to be level five. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready to. Three, okay. two, one, go. I see only three votes. Uh, yeah, ex extra and Eric. Uh, Eric, you there? Yeah, I voted. Oh, you it, did I just not? It says to everyone. Uh, I only see Tadas, Nicola, and me who voted. Yeah. I don't see extra or Eric. Yeah. How weird. My chat says from me to everyone. I'll do it. Again. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. Okay. We Very are strange we internet. Lost. <laughs> we lost on it. Too. Try that. All okay. right. Let me try it. Let me try it again. Then there. Did everybody get that this time? Yeah. Yes. I see it's it. weird yeah. because it came up in my chat. And said from me to everyone. All right. Okay. Yeah. I put mine in again too. So. Yeah, it worked. Okay. Yeah, so okay. Eric has three votes, and Tadas has two votes. Uh, Tadas okay. voted for Eric, and Eric voted for Tadas. So maybe we need to like to sort it out. <laughs> yeah. I would advocate Eric to vote for himself because for me, I usually I get ranked high, uh, higher, often like highest when I have some output, like some new article where I present my progress or or I will I plan to to present a proof of concept. And so for me, it's fine to 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 have this time in between where I'm not ranked as high and so all right I'm easy but I still think <laughs> <laughs> okay so we're I think we're set on level five then yep okay is everybody ready for level four yep cool three is everybody ready yeah 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 three two one and go oh yeah uh nicola you picked uh eric again. oh yeah sorry i wanted i thought it was the last two passed before sorry okay it looks like the das has three or four to five i think yeah four to five looks like yeah okay sounds good Shall we Is proceed someone to keeping track of the ranking? Because no one put their yes account in the chat. Well, so far we have Dan, Eric, the DOS. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Should we do level three now? Yes. Three. Two, one, and go. Okay. Okay. And it looks like Nicola has four to five here too. Um, yeah, I really appreciate what you're doing a lot, uh, Nicola, with the bees and also being on the town halls. It's super, uh, super helpful. I voted for extra because I also, uh, I also really appreciate what he's doing too. And I'm really thankful he's joining and hope that he'll keep joining and contributing all the great stuff. Um, yeah, but, I, I um, I'm, I'm very happy either way. I try to come uh, at all the hidden fractal and the tool hall calls. Uh, I know I'm not like uh, active besides that, but I try to be uh, in those calls because I like it's fun. Yeah, thanks so much, Nicola. It's incredibly helpful and and so very much appreciated. So yeah, I'm a huge welcome. fan of everything you're doing. I really appreciate it. And you you see nothing. We have good stuff coming up. <laughs> All right, <laughs> looking forward to it. <laughs> Could uh, uh, everyone put their US account names in the chat, especially Eric and Extra? Uh, we haven't voted for yeah for Extra. So Extra, you're level uh, two. 
yeah. like definition because you're the last one. Um, I see Eric has his hands up. I'll so. get over it. Oh, no, I don't. Sorry. Oh, okay. That recognized me. That was automatic. Yeah, okay. So I put I put my your second for you guys. Great. Uh, okay, that does put his. Uh, okay, so now we have about five or six minutes to reach consensus about being a delegate. Um, who is interested in being a delegate for this week and the upcoming four weeks? You mean for the council? Yes. Okay. Just so Dan, just a question, Dan. Are you still on it from last week or the week before? Yes. So or does it only last a week? It lasts for four weeks. So last four weeks. Okay. Yeah. So you're and, still on it. And, yes. And Tadas is also still on it too. So both Tadas yeah. and I both uh were elected delegates in the first week that we did it, which was two weeks ago. So okay. I don't know exactly how it worked in this like Buddha process because it's not really booted up until this week or next week. Next week, technically, when we have four councils. And by that time, I guess both Tadas and I will have only one week remaining or zero weeks remaining. Um, so I guess maybe our election was just symbolic. I'm not sure. Um, but both of us well, could be reelected. But we've, yeah. I think we will be able to vote right after uh, next meeting. We will have four councils and we will be in one of them. So it will be only in one. Yes. Well, the uh, reason I ask is because last week, Dan, sorry to interrupt. Um, which is because when we when you and I are having this when you know the when this when this group was having when the breakout group was having the conversation last week, I know that the fact that you had already been a delegate from the week before had some impact on how people voted for you. Thank you. Or how people not not that's that's not way that's not the way I should put it. Um, that 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 had some impact on who voted for who to be a delegate, because if you are already on, then maybe it was better, or at least the argument was made that maybe it was better to vote for somebody else, um, instead. So that that's that's why I'm asking the question is because is that should that have an impact on who we should who the delegate should be necessarily and i don't know if you have an answer for that but i at least wanted to pose the question to the group is you know that's at least what came up last week yeah it's a great question thanks extra um and just a brief answer as he uh, uh nicolas hands up but it it should play a role definitely i think it, it, it shouldn't preclude somebody from being in a delegate multiple times like in some situations uh it makes it, it might make the most sense for the community to elect somebody to two different councils or perhaps even more but also it's something that the community should think about and there's also benefit to electing new people to councils and decentralizing decision making more in some situations as well um and it's a subjective yeah, and I, and thing that's part of the beauty of the process i think just one one point, and I know that I know Nicholas has his hand up. Just to, just to add to that real quick before I turn it over to him, um, I think the other the other issue is if your delegation is a is a month, for example, like you're describing, and the group wants to continue to be on, and your delegation is expiring, then that's something we should like take into account as well, right? Because um, if it's only four weeks and you have one week left, and then our voting for you to continue the delegation uh is also a consideration right considering that you've done well or, or not not you necessarily i mean i'm using you as an example but you know generally right um that that's another that i think that's another like input you know into into this decision making sorry nick yes. go ahead yeah it's all right um i just I agree that. that eric your second is like uh, west stretch that gm there is that gm at the end isn't it yeah, yeah, that's correct. Okay, so, okay, so I put I put the that GM in the chat. Um, yeah. I have a question. We we leave level one blank, uh, Dan. Yes. Okay, so we don't have much time, so we need to reach consensus to elect the council delegate. Uh, personally, I would vote for Tadas uh, because it's like it's Tadas proposal, and so I, I would like to put him in the spot, like delegate. Uh, 
And so, I don't know, do we vote in, we vote in the chat, right? Uh, well, first off, we should just determine who wants to be a delegate, because uh, I don't know if oh, we've yeah. announced that. Okay, uh, I'm not running to be a delegate myself. I'm not, I'm not running to be a delegate either. Okay. I would vote for somebody experienced. <laughs> okay, at this point. <laughs> Maybe, maybe Dadas and Dan. Uh, so, Dadas, are you running? Mm, yeah, I I could be a delegate. I, I don't know. On previous week, I preferred to not be a delegate, but it's uh, delegation is expiring <laughs> anyway. So, uh, and if it, only Dan is running, I don't know. I, I It's fine for me if Dan is uh, a delegate too. Yeah, so if you if you're not that in much to go to be a delegate and you're fine with Dan, we can just like because we can just vote for Dan and so Yeah. It's, it's up to you, so, it's up to you. And if you want to be a delegate, we just vote and let's people decide. Dan, and how, how are you how are your feelings for being a delegate? I'd be happy to be a delegate. Um I'm focusing on this a lot. I'd also be happy for Tadas to be delegate too. I think that Tadas would do a great job as well. I'm happy to go either way. Also, welcome, Stephen. We're just uh, doing. It. Thanks for joining. We're just doing a quick delegate thing in this last minute while we're trying to reach consensus. Sure. No. Go ahead. I see. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. So I I I would advocate advocate for Dan being a delegate. Okay. Okay, so do we vote in the chat uh, for like uh, formality? So everyone put, uh, I don't know if you have, do we have to vote then if you are alone to run? Uh... Um, no, I, I, I suppose it could work either way. I'm, I'm happy to accept that. And if Tadas advocates for me, then I'm happy to go with that. Um, uh, so and, and, and if Tadas advocates Dan, I say Dan. Okay, so <laughs> anyone is, everyone is good to Dan being the delegate? the council yeah okay yes myself too yeah it's okay. ma it makes sense i do focus right now mostly on albedo which is more long term and then it's i see then being a lot more focused on short term stuff like proposals and uh, and stuff i'm fine i keep attention on that too but then there's a lot more work on it like uh, the curating the articles about it and so on I think and that is play is the point. I think that you know, Dan is you know having been a, you know being a delegate now, uh, and doing the work that he's been doing that he showed us in you know the presentation earlier. I think he's probably the one who's who is best positioned and familiar with the, with with what the delegate needs to know, and exactly. and being able to be the most effective you know, in, in that role, right? So if Tadas is working on other stuff that's a little more long-term and the rest of us don't really want to be a delegate, then I think that that's the obvious choice to continue his his delegacy, you know, in, in that um, for the, you know, for the foreseeable future. At least that, that's my opinion. So, I, I, you know, I would certainly throw my, throw my vote behind Dan as well. So um, I think we've kind of, um, informally come to consensus unless there's somebody else who wants to bring up another point that Dan should be or the delegate. No, I just think Tadash should be focusing on helping me actually roll out tools to an actual organization and I think that should be his priority but that's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm interested in that a lot too like how, how yeah, so. But if anything, Eric, if anything, Eric, that speaks to why he shouldn't be a delegate, right? <laughs> I mean, that, that's kind of an anti-vote. Is it? <laughs> yeah. if, 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 if I may, right? So, you know. I yeah, think yeah, he like, should be, instead of being a delegate, he should be focused on rolling out tools to an actual organization is what I'm saying. And then Dan, as a delegate, can tell everybody about it and all his stuff. Right. So, and sorry, then we can that, integrate. Yeah. Then we can integrate Swarm in there to market all these artists and people in there. Okay, so we got fifty-eight seconds. I think we're good with Dan being the delegate. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Unless we hear any, unless I hear any major, and I, I don't know, I'm not running the meeting, but just like as a member, I mean, I think that we're we're at a point where. 
we've run out of time here. I think we've done, you know, all the voting we need to do, right? So we're we're good to go. Yep. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, and, and and Steve and I told everybody what a great job you did on Monday's ah, uh, Metaverse Monday that. live stream. So yes, don't, I did. Thank you. Don't don't forget to put Dan in uh, the legged section uh, at the top. Uh, just remember so it got you. Okay. Cool. That's well, it. yeah. Thanks for the great meeting, everybody. This was really yeah. fun and insightful and helpful and stuff. So awesome. Yeah, it was a great group of guys. Talk to you in a minute. Yeah. Cool. Hey, everyone. Hope you had a great meeting so far. Our group was really fun and interesting. Well, 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 welcome, Stephen, too. I think, uh, I, I don't know, I don't think you joined last week. I think it's your first week, but thanks so much, uh, Stephen, for joining. Stephen does awesome work in WAX community and with NFT backers. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome, of course. And then also, um, Yep. So it was Eric's first time too. I was with Eric and Extra. So it's really cool once again to see all the collaborations with the Wax community. Great to see you, Shans. Hope that you enjoyed it uh, as well. So Piku, and thanks for joining Chris and everybody. Um, yeah. And, and, would, would anybody like to share some thoughts about um, your room or your experience so far? We also yeah. uh, have lots of discussion about proposals and stuff we can get into as well. Quick question, when we uh, fill out the form, do we just put people's names in there or do we need their uh, EOS accounts? That's EOS accounts. We, we put that in there. I don't think I have yours. Um, Sure. So mine is just Dan simply, but I'll copy and paste everything in case everybody hasn't yet. So that... Um, uh, so that you can copy and paste it. So as soon as you submit the, the ranking, you should have a, a message on the bottom right saying that submitted verify with a green mark on. Uh, that would mean that it works and everything's fine. Else you will have a error message. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, it was just not working for a little moment and then that was working again. And Vlad explaining into our uh, breakout room why because he's using generic functions that apply to every smart contract. So he has uh, made indeed that that's work for the hidden fractal smart contract and that's work again. So you will see uh, on the right bottom, submitted, submitted correctly normally. Sounds good. And then, yeah, Eric, I also posted the account names in the chat too. Yeah, I see it. All right. Um, well, I, I threw a timer up for this is going to get us to the end of the hour. So um, I'm not, you know, I guess we haven't figured an actual itinerary, but I think we should aim to to get all. So everyone who's on the council, um, we this will be our first week. We can vote on proposals. So if we have any proposals we want to vote on, um, yeah, we should talk about them now. And then uh, again, we, we should aim to be done by the, the top of the hour. Um, that's just a suggestion, but I, my, that's where my time constraints are as well. So I'm sure there's others that may be in that same time constraint. Um, yes, I'm yeah, in the same thing. time constraint. Okay, cool. So yeah, with that being said, I guess if anyone who, who all has proposals that they would like to have voted on, I guess we could start there. Patrick has hands raised up and CC. Yep. I'll ask yeah. hand afterwards too. Okay, I, I will be very uh, short. Um, I have made a proposal already last week, uh, not on consortium, not on hidden talk, just by speaking into this room to, to say that we have to do maybe a brainstorming session for hidden fractal. I am preparing that into closed door and behind closed door, and I want to co-host that with Dancing Joy. And uh, that will be every two weeks that we could start uh, this uh, brainstorming session maybe in uh, middle middle November, something like that. No rush with that. But the goal will be into 
every two weeks that we do those brainstorming session and we have a mind map always updated on the on on the show on uh, in in live and at the end of the meeting the mind map is up to date everyone can go there and see what we have uh, brainstormed and that will point to uh, discord and to edentalk.com bbs and uh, like this the mind map is um, is totally uh, use, useful i am writing a document uh, pascal don't worry, I am in since now one week beside the workshop that I have made 60 hours of work to interview all those beautiful people. And I am creating tool for this hidden fractal, by the way, also one of the, the tool is one tool that is used by Jesse Jaffe for the bees. So this tool will be also used here. So I am enjoyed to have those brainstorming session this time that will be very useful. The last time for fractally that was useful too. But we see the result now of the Genesis Fractal one where, where they are. So us, we are independent, we are doing our things, and we take in account the Fractal paradigm, but we are not waiting on the others. So that's my proposal, and that's not even to do a poll on um, Discord, you said me, uh, on consortium, you said me that, uh, uh, Dante Enjoy. They are not to do really a uh, a poll on consortium to, 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 know, to know if the people are interested to do a brainstorming session. That's not, a, that's not even not a question. That's very uh, useful. OK, so that's only what I have to say. Sounds great. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to participating and co-hosting the brainstorming sessions with you. I think that will be really helpful. Um, I, I I I think that the community um, that there's general consensus, and I think it's a good idea that we want to be um, very pragmatic and efficient with our time use after these meetings and use these hours uh, after the breakout room well, and then having these breakout or having these uh, these brainstorming sessions after on a biweekly schedule, or whatever we determine is best, um, seems like a really great way to. Uh, discuss these things in more detail and there's lots to discuss lots of interesting proposals so thank you patrick for taking the initiative and i'm looking forward to working with you more on that um yeah and thank you for sharing it and yeah i agree i don't think it needs a formal proposal unless uh maybe if we want to at some point reward eden respect or something like that then it's possible but at this point i think that we can basically just um have it where we're announcing it and then we'll do it and we'll share more details when we're ready and people can join and so forth yeah and do the things not too much to write, 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 but do the things. So that's what I want to do here. Not just uh, writing documents, but uh, doing the things. Yes, agreed. OK, cool. I'll share a little bit of something that I wrote. Uh, it's a document that I wrote, but it's also uh, for next steps for doing things and so forth, too. I'll also say, too, I saw Shan said he had to go in five minutes. So thanks for uh, joining Shan. It's great to see you as well. And thank you also for the recent article that you wrote and all the great work you've been doing in the community. Um, and then, yeah, uh, I think Pascal also wrote that it'd be good to, he said, we need a written proposal. So yeah, at, at some point, uh, Patrick and I will work on um, writing out uh, more of a proposal or a plan or something like that, that will have more details about this as well. So thank you for that uh, feedback, Absolutely. Pascal. So yeah, uh, I'll share my screen. I'll be brief. I know that uh, Jesse and Marco are coming up next. Um, have their hands raised, but sorry, I'm trying to find my screen. I just found it, and now it's not popping up. Okay, I got it. Uh, uh, okay, cool. You guys can see the clock now, right? Okay, cool. Yes. So yeah, yeah uh, I just want to show I shared this like, uh, I don't know, nine hours ago or so. So probably I imagine most people haven't had the chance to check it out yet. Um, but I want to just provide a brief overview. It's not a proposal in particular, but I think it's a it's it's a collection of the proposals from the past week. There were six proposals regarding how to set the agenda and uh, process proposals that we discussed last week. And people had really great ideas. So I wanted to just go ahead and curate that so we could have one place where we can look at them all together and then think about them all together. And then I also just shared some general thoughts about where we're at with uh, Eden Fractal and what we're doing. So I, I encourage people to check this out and, and read it more and feel free to reach out with any questions or comments. And hopefully this will be a helpful resource. It's edencreators.com slash agenda. 
I also posted in the Eden members telegram and the Eden discord. I'll just provide a really quick high level overview. So I, I write a little bit of an introduction here and there's a bit of a table of contents talking about an introduction with what we've done so far and then curating each of the proposals from Vlad to Das, Lenny, Felix, myself and Jesse. Thank you everybody for making these proposals and also for uh, for thinking about a lot and then engaging with these proposals and these ideas. So yeah, there's a bit of an introduction about how a decentralized and autonomous community like Eden uh, can make decisions and how we can schedule our time and the importance of scheduling time. And then there's a section about what we've done so far, cooperating with the Fractly process and Eden plus Fractal process and how this has been really helpful for scheduling time for the first hour. But now we're working on kind of a new protocol to schedule time. So um, you can read this more details. I also put together an article for the Eden plus Fractal process that was proposed and a few weeks ago by Tadas and that we've been adopting and electing delegates um, so people can learn more about the Eden plus Fractal process here. And I have an interview coming out with Tadas with more details about this. And Patrick also I, and Patrick and I also did an interview with Tadas where we spoke about this process as well. And then, yeah, I um, I, I just curated some of the proposals. So I, I curated and wrote a little bit about these six proposals. So there's Vlad's proposal about using the following post breakup room meeting structure with consortium here. And I also found timestamps of when each person shared their proposal, basically, and then shared some responses in Discord. I responded to each person's proposal with some thoughtful comments and questions in uh, Discord as well. And then, yeah, there's also Tadas's proposal, the video of Tadas sharing it, some thoughtful feedback from myself and Vlad so far, Lenny's proposal. I don't think Lenny proposed, just shared it in the video yesterday, last week. So I'd, I'd welcome if uh, Lenny or anybody else wants to share their proposal, then uh, feel free to share it here. Uh, and I also shared some responses, Felix's proposal, along with a timestamp of when Felix shared it. And along with some questions and some feedback that I had for Felix in the Discord, it might be easier to talk about a lot of this in the Discord. Uh, I feel like we're at a point where I don't think we're ready to pass any of these proposals, but we're at a point where we can explore them and do a good job with exploring it. Um, but I'm interested to hear everybody's thoughts. I also made some proposals last week that I curated here, and Jesse made a proposal to uh, create a second community room in the after breakout rooms, which is kind of orthogonal. It's, it's not like the other ones are all kind of, um, you have to pick one or the other to some extent, whereas this is kind of different uh, and it's kind of a different proposal, which I think is a good idea. Uh, and then I wrote some recommendations for how we can explore these proposals and then use these as guides and then potential future uh, innovations and stuff like that. But I just wanted to give a, a, a quick level overview. There's also some related posts I've been working on making the EdenCreators.com website better and collecting all these articles. Um, but yeah, people can explore that on your own time. Feel free to ask any questions. That it's at EdenCreators.com slash agenda. And yeah, Patrick just shared the link. So thank you very much for that. And feel free to share thoughts here um, or in the Eden Discord or Telegram or wherever. And I'm looking forward to discussing all of these proposals with y'all um, coming soon. And yeah, I'm really excited. Thank you everybody so much for the proposals and uh, all the great work. I think that Eden Practical is on a, and Eden is on a really good path overall. So thank you everybody. And I'll pass it on now to Jesse. Hey, Dan. The site looks great um, to go through everything and did a great job there. So thank you. Um, my uh, What I'd like to work on as a delegate, and even if I'm not voted as a delegate for the Eden Fractal, is the legal side of things. So uh, Dan had sent me Fractally LLC's uh, legal agreement, and I read through it and I, so I spoke to Dan that maybe we can kind of do a copy paste thing for, for this group. And upon reading it, I do not think that's appropriate because a lot of what's in the Fractally LLC agreement is centered around the respect token and the role that the token plays. And it's actually critical for us to limit the functionality of the of our token, the Eden token, as much as possible, because this is the, the main legal risk and being a part of the group. I think as it is now, it's good as it is now. The Eden token is non-transferable and it's therefore just a, uh, it's a symbol. It, it doesn't like, yes, you, or um, you can also vote for it on consort. You can use it as voting on consortium um, it's just a signaling tool. So it's like, like a symbol of respect and a signaling tool. That's the role of the token. That's very limited. Um, I, there, there's no, there's, I, I'm 99% sure 
that there's no legal precedence of using a token as a signaling tool to help make decisions. Um, I, I'm pretty sure we're, we're good there. The, the main thing is that it's non-transferable. That's the main thing. And so, um, however, the, the main risk right now is that there's no legal entity. And I, I've read, I've been reading, and if you don't have a legal entity, the government will put one upon you. It's most, most likely a general partnership. So I think it's critical for the, the founders and contributors of the Eden Fractal to set up a corporation. And I am willing to assist in that, in, in that capacity. I can make suggestions. And also the way I propose to assist is we can still take things out of the uh, fractally agreement. We could take certain clauses and kind of build our own that's most relevant for the Eden Fractal. So it's something that I'm willing to work on and like take out certain paragraphs that, again, I'm not a lawyer, but I know we don't really have any lawyers here, but um, I feel like I can at least um, act as a filter a little bit. I mean, if there's someone better, please step up. Definitely have no legal training, but I've read about the legal stuff. Um, Jesse, if I interrupt yeah. mayor for sure. one second. Uh, have you thought about what we, we used to do in hedge fund, which is like a master feeder structure as it's known, um, where you have LPs that are essentially the owners of the equity or the tokens as limited partners. And then there is an agreement with the general partners that are managing the limited partners uh, positions, essentially. I don't think it's relevant because our, the token doesn't have any value here. Our well, the token, token doesn't have any value now. Or Does ever. Mean the token won't have any value ever? Is that, was that, was that, is, that, is that your assessment? Yes. Because as soon as the token has value, that creates a legal liability for the group. Yeah. We use the EOS token. That has value, but that's not owned by this group. That's a very decentralized token. This mm -hmm. Eden fract this Eden token, it's critical that it never has value. How can you it's stop like you. someone else? How can you stop someone else from adding it to an AMM and giving it Be value? Because uh, mm -hmm. because it's non-transferable. You put in the smart contract that's non-transferable. Is it currently is that the case currently? It's non-transferable? Yes. Oh yes, yes. it's already the case, yeah. Oh yeah. Since the beginning, by the way. Yeah, since the beginning. <laughs> and it was something. Um, I wasn't aware of, I didn't know it was like that since the beginning. And so uh, we're, I, so that's a good thing. And so the, the real, the, the, the main thing is that there's no legal entity. And um, if there's ever a problem, which I don't see any foreseeable problem, but there's ever a problem, then we don't want them to assign a legal entity upon us. And so this unincorporated nonprofit association seems, seems great. Um, I haven't read too much on it yet, but it's just a matter of just putting in that legwork of getting an entity set up. And then I think we're going to be in a, in a great place from a, a legal risk perspective. I agree. Just, just one, one other cool question. Um, wouldn't we be... Wouldn't even though the token is non transferable, right? Um, I mean, you could create a essentially a derivative related to that non transferable token that has some value, right? So, even though you couldn't exchange the ownership of that token, you could theoretically exchange the value of the derivative of that token to other ownerships. But what's the what's the derivative of zero? If the token has zero value and the derivative of that token, how could it have any value? I think you can always come up with a second use case of how to how to create a derivative and use a derivative in a way that um, generates value. Even if the original didn't have any monetary value, it's got voting 
power or some other utility attached to it. And that utility is a value to somebody. And if they wanted to create a derivative that represents the financial aspect of that utility, they could do that. So the only utility right now is that you can use it on consortium to vote on ideas that um, you would like to be addressed by the delegates. That's the only utility right now. But I, I understand the point. But and I, I'm I'm not trying to get into an argument, Jesse, because I, I think I think we're on the same page here, right? But I but I think that you know, to Steve's point is, you know, um, there's a risk. While, there. That's the point. While, right? while, while, the, while the consortium is the only utility at the moment, that's not it's not going to be. It theoretically wouldn't be limited to that, right? And while that value on the derivative is very is very small, right? If you continue to add more and more utility to it right then now you're adding more and more value right, uh, right. in that utility in that utility space right um, and the people who want to have just using the consortium analogy for you know usage for a moment right the consortium users who wanted to have more and more voting power don't really care about the value of the underlying asset all they value is how much more voting power they have on consortium Right. Um, and so if they wanted to um, add their, you know, build up their voting power on consortium, then they see the value in that derivative in itself just by having the voting power. And if you added more platforms analogous to consortium, then you might find other groups within those other voting groups voting platforms, let's call it, analogous to consortium that also see value there, right? And then now you've added a whole lot more utility to that. Yes, I get, um, it. I get it. So the, that's, yeah. that's sort of the derivative analogy that, that, I, that I was getting at. Uh, and I'm not saying that that is a immediate use case or even a use case that, that makes sense in the long term. Uh, but again, I just wanted to kind of illustrate kind of like the hypothetical of just because the asset itself has no value, the utility to Steve's point uh, can, can, can be monetized. And it, it becomes almost like lobbying power in, in the political space. Uh, people pay lobbyists a lot of money to influence uh, decision makers. But right. in this particular case, any derivative that's created, as long as it's not directly created by this group, that's not a risk to this group, right? Somebody else creates a derivative and starts trading based off of the value of what you did. You didn't do that. I'm not sure. So it's, I'm not sure. You didn't create I don't know. a risk. But we I'm need to. Lawyer, like, but I'm, I'm, I'm right. fairly certain that would be somebody else's okay. liability. But what if that, what if that person who created the derivative is a member or even as a delegate of the Eden Fractal. I think that basically, if somebody wanted to create a derivative, then nobody can stop them from doing so. But whoever created the derivative would be accepting any legal liability potentially because they're the ones who are creating it. It's not the community as a whole and so forth. Um, but also- um, Unless it was someone in the community that did it. Well, Unless it was a that did it. No, I, well, I mean, no, as as long as it's not the community as a whole make a decision. If it was one member acting on their own and even claiming to to represent the community, if the community said no, 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 we didn't make that decision, then the community is not liable, and it goes back on that person. Right? Is that kind of what you're going at, Dan? Yeah, I think so. Um... I think that you explained it well, Stephen, and I'm not totally sure, like we'll have to explore this, but that's what makes sense because anybody can create a derivative and like, um, there's no way that, uh, that any sort of law could penalize people for other people making derivatives. And if somebody in the community is doing that, um, then that would be that individual <laughs> accepting that risk and not the whole community, I think. Uh, but also, so Great discussion, great point, Jesse and Stephen. But I also want to be respectful to Marco and Pascal too. Um, if you guys would like to chime in, 
Yeah, I just want to say real quick, just really good feedback. Thank you, Extra. Um, really good, really good feedback. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Extra. Um, I want to say uh, that uh, the people who uh, make the guns, the people who uh, make the cars, aren't shooting and driving. And uh, they're targets, uh, whether it goes through. Uh, it, you know, it may not matter in a public relation war or something. Um, so anything that can connect the group um, is what I think uh, the practical team is looking at. Um, as the state of things are now, especially because crypto is unpopular and there's a lot of um, uncertainty, which is why I back uh, Jesse's thing about taking action first and looking for the entity uh, that we want to uh, submit regulations of. Um, and now, as far as my handle, um, I was pushing for myself and went uh, for the delegate thing because uh, um, with how the Frackley uh, team left us in this situation here, which we picked up pretty well, still it's always good to um, focus on news and information systems, which is why I'm definitely support um, Patrick's brainstorming. I think brainstorming is not the only thing that we need. I think we also need to quick and you know briefings and stuff. So I don't want to turn this into some type of red tape or long-term discussion, but quickly revisit um, beginning to end as if uh, Eden Pratt arose on its own uh, and brainstorm will definitely part of that. Um, so we definitely support that. And again, um, anybody who wants to add um, information exchange and um, news so that we can have a um, intelligent framework uh, in moving forward, not um, intelligent discussions, but uh, intelligent resources. Um, resources where decisions have been made, resources that have um, things we can look back on and be clear about. Um, anyway, I'm going to let it go. Sorry, sorry. I encourage everyone to see the video with Michael O'Sullivan by wiredao.com. I have interviewed him and we discussed it into this video. If you see this video, yeah, there are the timestamps. That's very easy. We discuss about liability, DAOs, by wiredao.com, because uh, Michael is doing a publisher council into by wiredao.com and he explained what is a DAO for him or for let's say the people that want to create a DAO, to focus just to do DAO, to have utility and voting, trading, transferable things, better not to do, because this is a general problem with the DAOs currently around the world, not just for Fractali LLC, but also for Nova Crypto LLC myself. If I want to do a DAO today and going in Liechtenstein, near the Switzerland, we have Liechtenstein, that's the place to go to do DAOs or in the uh, US, in uh, Texas. But uh, by the way, that's very complicated. So this interview with Michael O'Sullivan, O'Sullivan, that's very well done, well crafted, and you will see what are the challenges by doing those. Just to, to, to make a little uh, parenthesis here, because this is related. Can you say a word, consortium? That's fine. Hands. Yeah, Pascal, you want to go ahead? And thank you, guys. Um, yeah, thanks, Dan. Thanks. Um, as I want to follow up with what uh, Jesse brought up, um, I will also uh, do some um, study proposal around how we can form ourselves as a community. We don't need to go around legal law. We don't need to. Um, I believe in cooperative. Cooperative has uh, the way they are structured around the world, even here in Canada, they are well structured. Cooperative can be deployed on blockchain. So they have shares. So our token can represent shares in our community. You know, and in those shares, the community or the uh, legal structure with the cooperative can take it back. Okay, we can get back our, our token uh, from members. Um, so one of the things I'll be looking forward to to complement uh, Jesse World is to sort of cooperatives. They are well designed for tokens because they don't need to go around laws. You know, they have members, they have um, member fees to become a member, they have 
economic activity, they share it back to our Fidia members. So if we can, in the, our governance model, the Eden, fractal governance model is powerful. If we use that with a cooperative legal structure, Dan was very, Dan um, and Felix, they were good at starting it. So they can represent us as a cooperative with three members, the OBB, maybe they can be the working members. Um, and then that's the legal structure we can use not to go around the laws, you know, but our tokens is important in our governance models. Um, that was our support I'm pushing. Thanks. I, I didn't understand what you said, Pascal, that you could, this group can sign up to another group. And no. what do you mean you don't, we don't have to go around the laws? Like we are trying to say, um, based on what you got from the uh, Fractal LLC, we are trying to say issuing a token in this community, Eden, is not, we should not do it. Okay. That's right. That's the message that I'm, I'm getting. Right. I'm saying, uh, if we want to, we don't need to, as a community, we don't need to go around the law. We don't need to say, since the legal is not clear, we don't have, we don't need to uh, issue a token. We agree that the factor of governance is what we need. We need that. As the way I see, our we need that one. If you want a legal structure um, on the ground that can represent us, we can study cooperatives and then form ourselves. Pick, yes. In Canada, it's three members to be to start a cooperative. So we can pick three members, uh, Dan, Felix, or JC. We started this initiative to say these are the members of our cooperative. They represent us, you know, and then the the we as a community, we can function, uh, got uh, kind of an economic activity. Um, and then from these economic activities, the reward will go back to the members who are contributing. So it's the legal part that um, one of the uh, one of the parts that we can we can take to keep our governance model and then to keep our token. That's a that's a point, yeah. But we need to for the fact that governance world. Uh, as a community, we need a token. Uh, I know because nobody will, nobody has the answer from the legal perspective. You know? But you can study traditional structure that exists. They are working very well, and then design our community legal structure around it. Also, so that was a suggestion. But I would try to um, to complement what the studies that you will be doing. Maybe I can put some uh, options there so that. When we have things on the table, we can. Uh, in Canada, we don't have problem with cooperative. So they are everywhere, everywhere. They have shares, the members there. So it's, uh, we can do it on the blockchain. Thank you, Pascal. I really appreciate you sharing these thoughts. And I'm looking forward to listening again and thinking about this a lot more. I think it's a really important issue. So thank you also, Jesse, for bringing this up. I think maybe Jesse had to go. I don't see him on the screen anymore. I know he had a time limit. Um, but yeah, thanks to Jesse and thanks to Pascal and, and Stephen and Extra and everybody uh, and Patrick and everybody who's uh, thinking about this. I think it's really important and I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I'll share a couple of links in the chat. Um, so for one thing, I'll share the UNA document that the faculty team uh, was developing for a while. They just released this uh, draft UNA uh, a few weeks ago, about three weeks ago. And this is a 13-page document. They're working with lawyers and investing a lot of time and money into making this work with the UNA structure. And um, I think ultimately at this point, they're not planning to do it um, because there was apparently some um, UNA, Unincorporated Nonprofit Association, that got sued somehow. I'm not sure about all the details there, um, but that's there. And they put a lot of resources into doing this and you know that they have a really talented team with really talented lawyers so this could be a very helpful resource for us to copy and paste some of it potentially i think that they're open to it too i spoke with dan larimer about that um so we could use some of these existing pieces also the original practically genesis contributor agreement i just shared that as well too that's what everybody signed on hive in order to participate in the genesis fractal uh and then i'm also working on a page that's in very early stages at edencreators.com slash agreement where I'm starting to curate these things. And I also just started to take some timestamps of what Pascal and Jesse and everybody were saying there too. So I'll work to organize this so we can uh, hopefully have a resource where we can look at all things together. I like the idea of using 
corporate entities or, or rather cooperative entities. Like uh, I'm, I'm not sure about any of the details, but I know Joshua has also mentioned that as well. And I just like the word cooperative. I think it's a great way to explain what we're doing here. And from what I hear, there's a lot of favorable um, entity situations there. I know CAC is also talking about trusts and different things like that. Um, I think that this is a big priority, especially as we grow. Like I was a little bit like concerned last week. I was, I was super excited that so many new people are coming, but also like if we grow too fast and there's many new people coming, like I, I think it's great. I, I don't mean to discourage people inviting from inviting people, inviting people and so forth, keep doing it. It's great. But uh, it, I think if we got like 50 or hundred people and people didn't understand what we we're doing here, then that could potentially be risky if we're not like, you know, prepared with proper stuff. So it's good just to have, you know, like things that, clearly explain what we're doing and people can sign like one thing in particular that I care about um, in addition to all the things we're mentioning is people being on video so I'm posting all these videos publicly on YouTube um, and I try to remind people about it and make it clear but I also wouldn't want people to be caught off guard by that so like I would like to have in the agreement just it very clearly stated like we're on video it's it, by signing this you're saying that you're cool with being on video and being shared and stuff in addition to many other things but um, that just a, a, a couple of thoughts why I think it's important to have this. And so I think that it, thinking about this is a great discussion to have. And then over the coming weeks or as soon as we can, uh, if we can get a great agreement in place that's both simple, but also helps provide protection and so forth for people in the community, I think that would be great. And I'll pass it on now. I, I just had a question for Pascal, if I understood what he's saying. Uh, so you're saying that uh, 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 Fractal would still need a transferable token, uh, just uh, that a cooperative would help it uh, avoid legal trouble, or, or, or do you mean a non-transferable token? Uh, if we took that road, it's going to be transferable, not to between ourselves, but between uh, the members and the cooperatives. Um, traditional cooperatives, they have share. Those shares can be bought and sold by the members, um, and then the cooperative can buy them back. But it has value in the market uh, in, a in a traditional way. So if we took the route of cooperatives, uh, we will need to have um, a legal structure. It's minimal three, three people to, to, to create a cooperative, and then um, they represent us as a traditional structure. So if this token, um, we want to sell it in the market, um, following the law, the cooperative will have to buy it, to buy it from members, you know, uh, and then sell it to a private entity or a public entity. So cooperative can, they have all, they are, they are favorable tools to raise funds, to distribute funds, and then to have their own economy. Um, we just need to agree that we are taking this path. You know, to, to, um, but this token, um, members cannot, as at this point uh, in Canada, members cannot share. They, they cannot trade their their shares. You know, but I believe the law will change in the future. Right? It will change. Um, but at this point, they cannot. What the corporates can do is to buy back those shares. So they will buy the the, the our token, the Eden token. So this our legal entity will buy it back at any price we we come with, and then they can sell it to an entity, to a private entity or to a public entity, because there is value in what we have as a community. So a private entity can easily buy our token because he sees value, he sees we are organized, we have governance, we have product, we have services. So um, a private entity can legally buy our token from our cooperative. That's the using the traditional method. I don't know if I'm I've answered. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit clearer. It's an interesting idea to explore, probably worth exploring. Thanks. Thanks, Thomas. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you, Pascal. I, I'm going to go. Okay, so I guess real quick, some thoughts on, I guess, I don't know, I guess the token, the Eden token as a whole. I mean, I don't know uh, if this is the way we're wanting to move, then uh, I guess those are next steps that we need to consider. I, I personally think that we're probably still early on trying to make Eden have like the Eden token have some form of value. I think right now the best way of looking about it is 
trying to incorporate it into Eden as a whole and its primary function right now for me would be just using it as a metric to reflect on who's contributing to to Eden, who's who's participating within Eden so that that helps us with the elections uh, with the with the chief delegates where I think potentially if, if we're going to form an organization, maybe it should be at the higher level of Eden as an organization as a whole. But um, yeah, I mean, cause I, I, right now, just some thoughts of like, if Dan and I, or a, and a couple other, like you, I guess you call us founders of the Eden Fractal were to start our own corporation. There's, that's taking a lot of like liability, potential liability risk that I'm not willing to take right now because there's no incentive to do so. That's a huge risk in, in a sense where there's no like financial gain. And so, I mean, yeah, that's, I, I personally, that's where I would stand is like, I, I got to be incentivized to take some type of risk like that. And then to also be willing to to look at what, what would I be taking on by doing something like that? So I, I, I personally think we're probably still, really early in these stages i think right now is probably just trying to incorporate into eden as a whole as like as this is a feature of eden um but I mean, those are just my thoughts um but with a minute like i, I do want to see what um steven has to say and i'll, I'll stick around for that but I, i'm assuming since we we haven't had anything to vote on today that uh just no proposals are getting passed or voted on um since we ran at the top of the hour but yeah if there's any last minute thing then i, I suggest that brought up because uh i think jesse left which he was a council member so that's one member that's out but i'll be leaving here here shortly too so um yeah just yeah anyone thanks, to speak Felix, up now but. thanks for that uh that clarification i think it's a, a good one um it's a decision that business uh owners and business founders have to figure out is when's the right time to incorporate and you don't always need to do it right away. Um, I'm pu putting this in the chat here, uh, Dan. This would probably address most of what you were saying. You can create a custom Zoom disclaimer. So when people are joining a meeting, you can have a disclaimer. And you could put everything you want in there about, you know, hey, you're being recorded. This is going to be posted. Uh, if that's not okay with you, don't join this meeting. We talk about a token. The token has no value, intrinsic value. It's not a security we just use it for voting things like that and whatever other things that you want to put in there and i think that's probably going to create enough of a buffer so that you can continue to grow um you know if you do get a 100 people next week um you won't have to be nervous you you know you're covered everybody knows what's going on and if there was ever any question um of liability you can always point back look we told people this and that's usually what um helps stem those liability issues is is being able to say hey we did due diligence to inform people we're not trying to rip anybody off this is we're trying to do what's right here and that's ultimately uh what prevails in the in hopefully in most judicial systems so Excellent. Thank you so much, Stephen. I had no idea about this page, so I really appreciate that very much. And I agree. I think this is a super helpful tool that we have. It's also helpful too to have it on chain as well. Like I remember, um, I, I have a recording at one point Dan Larimer spoke about um, back in like practically Genesis meeting twenty or so. I'll try to curate the timestamp at some point. But he talked about how one of the issues that block one got into and of course it's a very different situation where block one is raising four billion dollars to sell tokens whereas we're just a community of people just coming together and give each other respect but uh still some of the principles and lessons can apply he said that because like they had a lot of lawyers doing a lot of work to set expectations and write things but people didn't have on-chain att attestations and so that made it just more difficult to prove that people read it and so forth so the fact that we have a uh, blockchain and also there is a uh, contributor agreement um, code that's currently built into the front end of the user interface it's not active with any uh, actual thing that anybody assigned or any requirements assigned but we have that built in that uh, James Martin and Vlad have helped build so once we have something in addition that we want people or that the community agrees is a good idea for people to sign then we can use that to also get the on-chain attestation as well um, and have that in addition to the Zoom. And if that comes up right before the Zoom window that comes up, that would be perfect. So yeah, thank you so much, Stephen. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, we're gonna add that. I'm gonna add a little uh, 
prologue to that, to your, your comment. I think it's also a matter of downside risk, right? Um, this community doesn't have a liability of $4 billion that somebody can go after, right? So um, there's a certain amount of like legal reality of yes, if you're not doing it everything right at block one, there's money to go after. At this community, there isn't really any assets to go after, right? Uh, and so the interest of somebody looking into the details of what we're doing necessarily are completely different in, in you know, like I said, in financial reality than something like block one or the Ethereum foundation or, you know, anything else, right. That actually has money. Right. I mean, no, no attorney is going to go after a community. That's just a bunch of guys um, with no, you know, central legalized entity of assets to actually, um, you know, obtain. So anyway, but, but I, but I, I also appreciate Steve's point, you know, about, you know, just making that clear up front. Anyway, sorry about that. No, don't be sorry at all. Thank you, extra. That's a, that has an excellent point. So thank you for sharing. I really appreciate your insights. I, I see several people are unmuted right now. Um, oh, is something you want to say, Felix? Yeah, I was gonna probably just wrap it up on my end. Um, unless there's any closing thoughts, but um, yeah, I just want to make sure that you know, as a council member, we're not voting on anything that we've already declared that, and so we're good to. Yeah, basically, basically go because yeah, I, I got to hop on another meeting here. So yeah, yeah I think as a as a rule of thumb, we shouldn't vote if not all council members are present, or at least if not majority of council members are present. But yeah, uh, I I don't think we would have voted uh, today anyway on anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet. Well, yeah, I appreciate uh, everyone's time. Thank you, Stephen and Extra and, and Pascal, you know, you got for your guys' thoughts. And yeah, uh, I, it's awesome to see Stephen and Extra here as well. New new faces, new ideas. Uh, that's what gets this thing exciting too, right? Because uh, that's what we need. We need to, I think that's probably what we need to focus on. Let's just grow and we'll figure out things as we go. But if we're we're worried about trying to like polish this perfect product before we even have any like stress tests, I mean, that's just, that's not, the reality is you have to test these things. And so we need to be fine with taking a bunch of people. And we, yeah, I don't think we have a huge uh, liability right now as is. Um, so I, I just, yeah, I, th I think we're, I, it's just, it's nice seeing new faces. So yeah. Um, and yeah, I appreciate everyone. So you guys take care. And then, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll give a shout out to, sorry. I, I, so P, I, I don't know how to say your name. I, I know you told me earlier. I don't want to like kill it, but Sepiku, sorry. You kill it. Sepiku. Sepiku. Okay, Sepiku. <laughs> I'll remember that. Yeah, but yeah, nice ha seeing you here as well. And then yeah, uh, Eric, and then obviously everyone else is very consistent here too. So great things as far as, you know, a weekly occurrence with the, this community. So I'm excited for that, but take care of you guys. Thank you, Felix. Bye. Thanks, Thanks, Felix. Take care. Thanks, Felix. Have a good one, man. Thanks. Thank you for the invite. Take care. See you next week. Bye-bye. I just want to say um, whatever happened with the regulation, because that's changed always uh, these coming months, that's with change, uh, with change more often. I have put some links into the chat here and also into the Fractali, brand, uh, into the Fractali uh, Telegram. I have put that after the last Saturday. Uh, that's big two Saturday that we are stuck at with the regulation by Fractal LLC. But here, here in, in Weedon Fractal, we are not Fractal. We are not Fractal LLC. We are Eden Fractal. We do our things. We take in account the best fragmented experience, the best Fractal experience. Fractal exists since uh, before Fractal. Huh? That's not new. And we are doing the things for our own. And we try to do the best collaboration possible. That's what we are doing here. So whatever happened with the regulation, I want to see this hidden fractal growing in values, not only monetary value sense, but cooperation, collaboration, all these things. And to, to, to be uh, people that are 
interested about the information and the data, not only the people themselves. However, that we love the people, however, that we love the people. So me personally, I will be here until I die. I can assure you, I am in here since 2018. And if I was for the price, I would already leave. So if you are just for the price, uh, you will never, you will be always disappointed. So it's more to, to have the processes into this season factor and we have the processes. We are uh, doing that uh, with uh, Tadas Veticunas, hidden plus fractal process that we are using now and other processes. And yes, we are si signaling, signaling our intents on BBS and on consortium. We signaling, the signaling tools, that's all. And if you are doing the things with good intent, just for utility and not trade, trade the token and all these things, that's okay. If we begin to trade, we will be fucked. Stuck in, sorry, stuck in. But that's the thing. Okay, so I go back to can I, can, I, can I dovetail with what you're saying for a moment? Um, what? Can I, can, I, can I dovetail with what you're saying? Can I, can I add a little bit to what, to what you're saying? Uh, raise your hands. Oh. That's the procedure here. When someone oh, wants to speak, he has to raise his fucking hand. So raise oh, I'm sorry. Hand. Okay. Yeah. My I don't mind if I, uh, I don't mind if extra goes before me, though. You can go before me extra. I'm I'm sorry, Dan. I'm I, joking. I I'm joking. I didn't see your, ahead, see your hand was up. Um, no problem. It's I just want I just want to dovetail with what 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 Patrick was saying, which is I think it, it I think it's also advantageous for us who are members of different fractalites uh, to come together, right? Yeah. So yeah. I know that Eric mentioned that he was a member of the Genesis fractalite, and I know he's a member of the Alien World as I am, and so forth. To yeah kind of um, like not compare in a, in, a, in, a, in a negative sense, right? But to, to improve the, the fractal, right? Um, so that maybe like Eric and I were talking about in our breakup group, that what we had known from the fractal in the alien worlds sense, had yeah. helped, you know, a, you know, uh, inform us on how the fractal went, you know, in this sense, right? And I'm not a member of the Genesis fractal, um, but I do think my point being that I think there is good ways of informing the different fractals on best practices, if you will, right? I mean, I know one of the things that we talked about in our group that we've talked about in the past is, you know, do you vote for yourself, right? Okay. And, and, that's, and that's a very, that's a very like minute detail, right? In the, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but I think it illustrates how one uh, element can be kind of used, you know, to inform the rest of the fractals uh, in terms of how does um how how what's what's the like i said the best practices um yeah i understand you very well i was also thinking about that uh, a couple of days ago we have to make some best practices to show the others how we work but indeed you know what we have nothing to show to anyone and we have not to expect anything from anyone we have to do what we have to do in to our best of ability to have the best experience possible into this hidden fractal and not expect too much to see someone coming and give us funds like ENF, for example. So we have to do our things, growing the values that we have into this circle. And then people that want to give us some funds or participate with us, they will do that organically, naturally. So we have not to be uh, like, uh, please give us some no, we have to do that between us because we, are, we believe in what you are doing. And for sure, at a, time, at a point, maybe we will see the, the fruits, the monetary fruits coming. But it uh, seems to be that uh, if you are just focused on that, we will be uh, time. We have, uh, first, we will have a time pressure on the shoulders and we will have no, no uh, happiness to do the things here. So personally, I'm very happy to be here uh, when I can. 
Uh, I say every time that I will not maybe not come, but it seems to be that I come every time. So uh, I, I love this experience. I love to be in contact with you. Uh, extra. That's very extra to be in contact with you. And uh, well, yeah. Also, when I am not, not coming on into the fractali, sorry, into the alien world fractal from Duane Philippi. By the way, we have interviewed uh, Duane with uh, with uh, Dancing Joy a couple of uh, days ago. So I, I I love to see what is happening in other fractals, in other circles. So everyone, we want to do the things the most fragmented, the most distributed possible. So I think. You are always welcome here. I'm happy to see you here for the, seems to be that's the second time that you come here. So I'm very happy. Okay, guys. Yep. Great thoughts. Thank you, Patrick. And thank you, Extra. Um, thank so, you. yeah, I'm, I'm also very happy with how everybody in the group is uh, participating in value and the overall progress we're making. There's, there's a few thoughts I'd like to share here. Um, one, I think uh, we've been recording and meeting for over two hours now, so it might be good to wrap up the video soon. And I mean, people are still free to hang out and talk, but I think maybe I'll wrap it up soon. But before I get into that, um, a couple of things that I'd like to just briefly bring up and see if any has any thoughts about it. Um, so I think it's really just one thing, and we don't have to get too into it right now, but I made a proposal last week to change the start time for breakout rooms to uh, to 13 UTC or 14 UTC. I'll, I'll share my screen briefly right now just so people can see it if they want. So far, there's been uh, five people who have voted about this on consortium. Um, and basically, I, I, I also wrote out a page at edencreators.com slash time, which is uh, you, you can see the proposal here in the link. And then also there's a couple of proposals that aren't really relevant now, so I'll clean that up. But there's some reasons about why we might want to change the different times to make it work better with um, pe people who participate in the in the EOS sleep meetings. There's about 12 great engineers who participate there. So um, in the main precipice or the main reasoning for, for making this proposal was that now that we're doing the Eden Plus Factor process, it's a little awkward because uh, the rooms end at 1410 UTC and 55 minutes after that means that um, we, if people have to leave after an hour, then the delegates don't have a full hour to make decisions. And we kind of saw that a little bit today with uh, Jesse and Felix having to leave early. And as Das was saying, it's good when people can be there. So I think this is, I don't think it's a huge priority that we need to figure out now or ne next week necessarily, but uh, I think it's a good thing to discuss. Basically, I made a proposal where we can keep it at 1315 UDC. And it looks like one person voted for that with 20% of tokens or maybe two, I don't know. And then uh, for me, 13 or 14 UTC are both good and several people voted for that. And I think 14 UTC may be a little bit better, but either way works. But um, if anybody has any thoughts about that. personal uh, preference than Sinjoy? I, I prefer 14 UTC. Uh, I, th I think 14. it's a little bit better. So get yes, For me, that would be great also because okay. let's make uh, 4 p.m. Uh, into my afternoon on the, in Switzerland and 4 p.m. Cool. I can, uh, I can uh, leave my consulting and be with you more easily. Sounds good. When it is 13 UTC, 13 UTC, that's making to my, yeah, that's break my consul. Yeah, I, I speak for me. I mean, I'm sorry. I prefer 14 UTC just because it's, you know, an hour later, so I don't have to get up at 6 a.m. Um, oh, wow, I didn't realize it's so early there. So any time later that I don't have to get up at 6 a.m. would be better for me. So 14 and I get up at 7 a.m. would be better. <laughs> Okay, so yes. let's vote 14 Tell UTC. I vote. go on uh, where yeah. it is on, 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 on consortium. So yes. I vote for 14 UTC. So I, I I just shared the link here with consortium. Thank you, you're an you, angel. You, 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 so you can I will vote, vote there. now in, in live, in live. Okay, sounds good. And, and then there's also to do the here. things when it is the time to do the things. Otherwise, you do never something. So vote now, 14 UTC. I vote now. <laughs> No, I, I don't want to be as uh, be as uh, any anyone. So, but uh, for me, I will vote for 14 UTC. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I, it's fine with me either way. But uh, I, I, 14 Let's UTC is a bit better uh, for me and please. seems much better for other people. I, I just shared a link to uh, consortium where you can vote there, as well as the time article okay. that I put together with uh, some of the reasonings uh, that might be helpful to move to 14 UTC or just change in general. I'll also update that article more in the future, but um, yeah, 
uh, I suppose we can bring this up with everybody in the next meeting and also discuss over Discord and stuff like that. But it's good to hear everybody's thoughts. Does anybody else have any thought, uh, other thoughts about this so far? It seems like four people are interested in doing a 14 UTC here. Yeah. Well, this is my 6 a.m., so that would mean 7 a.m., so I'm, I'm going to 7 a.m. Huh? For sure. Excellent. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Thank you. And uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully we can switch up to 14 UTC to uh, uh, help you get a bit more sleep. And, and then eventually, as Extra was saying, too, we could potentially move it back further. This was just, I figured it was a first step where um, we can make a proposal and just change the time slightly, but um, we could potentially change the time by several hours or do it in a different day if people are interested in at some point. But yeah, yeah, it's it, 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 super dark. That would be nice. I think that's a one of the it's uh when we started it's like it's super dark so my recording quality is is, is also really bad so the light uh, I'm over here in West Coast California the light just comes up uh, around seven thirty so so that would be cool as I always say I am awake at five a.m. I'm not alive so <laughs> okay it's, yeah it was dark you don't want me too. voting and that's why like in the breakout room they were joking about the light coming in you know in my call and I was like yeah well the sun is coming up so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that does a very neat dramatic effect. And Sipaku, uh, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, sorry if I keep messing up for a while, but also I, I think that your dark background looks very Beautiful. cool. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like the cat's yeah, enjoying it from the moon, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. That's a real a cat screen. kept nice. running through. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, uh, it's a cat. Hopefully, we can meet them, too. Yeah, it's a cat. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I I finally I just broke down and got the green screen. I mean, I do uh, yeah fifty so, of these a week. So, what uh, thinks the cat about this meeting today? Is happy? Uh, what you think yourself as the owner of the cat? Are you happy with this uh, this meeting today? How it is going? Oh, it I is think it's an incredibly interesting process. I I mean, voting on the chain first of all, never heard of it. Got my anchor wallet for the first time. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, so nice. everybody was. Was oh, yeah. very when, you, when you come from the wax uh, world uh, to see the, yeah. the anchor wallet should be a, a crime yeah oh. um yeah I, I i mean like i said i think i mean i'm going to keep coming and hopefully do more on eos i like i i think i said at the beginning or maybe just in my group i i've only just dabbled in in, in the eos because of the pomalo granting for um immutable realms but uh, Lars Kamensby uh, Spot, who's um, who is Dark Pinup, he he's very much into, into the EOS platform, and uh, he's uh, wholeheartedly embraced it. So I had to learn it anyway. <laughs> so I'm, I'm here. Oh, and I'm gonna get involved with Alien Worlds. So that's yeah. I don't know if that's EOS. Is that EOS? I, I don't wax. even know. It's wax. It is wax. It. Yes. But it, EOS is getting involved though. Yeah. Kind of like but there is a involved, yes. Yeah. But there is, a, a, I would say, a trend now with this Eden on EOS chief delegate that we have uh, oriented very outreach, marketing, and all network to earn, networks to earn, and networking to earn. So by joining the networks that we have on the Antelope, uh, Antelope platform, we have WAX, UX, Telos, and EOS mainnet into, into the coalition. So if we can link the networks that are using the LIP protocol, the LIP protocol, and inter-blockchain communication between them, that would be great to see some WAX um, users coming to EOS thanks to Eden Fractal and be inducted into Eden on EOS. So that's why also uh, Eden Fractal is a great platform because we can we can be the entry, let's say. We can be an, uh, uh, a portal, portal to onboard new people into the EOS ecosystem because the EOS ecosystem has a kind of momentum now. It seems to be that we have a little bit more momentum, but forget about the price. But I, I know you are not interested about the price. I'm huh? sorry. Uh, I, I say, uh, generally speaking, uh, not against, not uh, for you, but generally speaking. Of course, yeah. Uh, for the people watching yeah. this, if you are interested by the price, you will never do something. So begin to do something, and then the things will come naturally. I, I see that for myself. I see. I experienced. Uh, sorry, I experienced said that for myself. 
by doing the things coming from the art seems to be so so uh, Disneyland when I say that, but that's very true. If you do the things coming from the art first, then that goes to the soul and the mind, and then you see beautiful things. Tadas, oh, I agree. Has, I Tadas, you have created the hidden plus fractal process that we are using here, and that's, that's very smooth. I love it. Yeah, baby. That's nice. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, I agree. Yes. And, and like I said, in my last interview, it's, I, I kind of think of us as this like archipelago of uh, groups, uh, archipelago, of course, being interconnected islands, but I've always thought of that as these interconnected communities uh, on the, in this big, beautiful space, right? Like, I think that all of these communities coming together, all these people coming together as a, uh, as a collective, we, we do more good. We promote, more um more frequently and and better as, as these large groups of people who really just believe in the chain and and believe in the space and and of course i believe in the art of the of the non-fungible tokens and the utility in real world sense like i see an nft being yeah. um ivrl stuff I see it being backed by silver i know there was actually the nft back i thought that was very very cool and then of course um Things like deeds to houses, uh, receipts for silver bars, thing, things like that. I, I, I see it more as uh, that. And then this is interesting that it becomes uh, a verification of, of human beings themselves. So yeah, well, it's, a, it's a very, very interesting concept. I'll be back. Thank you, Sepiku. Uh, did I say correctly? Sepiku? 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 Yes, Sepiku. Sepiku. Okay, thank you. Sepiku. 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 Like, oh, yeah, okay, Tadas, <laughs> you want to, to go? <laughs> yeah, so, so I just voted for 14 UTC as well. It's, for me, the current time is perfect, but we will have to turn the clocks this week. And yeah. So then 14 UTC will become perfect. <laughs> that will become perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I was joking with Tadas in private. I was saying him, I am in Switzerland, he is in Lithuania, he is in Lithuania, and I said, Oh, for me, that would be great at 2 a.m. <laughs> 2 a.m. You imagine when I am into my night, 2 a.m., and we meet, we do the meetings. That would be nice. Yeah. No, yeah. Anyway, I, I will be leaving now. Thanks, everyone, for... Thank you, Tadas, yeah. for all what you do. Okay, respect great. for Thanks, you. Us. Yeah, much respect. And, yeah, I suppose we should start to wrap it up. And regarding the timing, so we have five people here who have signaled uh, like 14 yeah. UTC, which, which is cool. If anybody, if Eric, you have an opinion, or if anybody else, uh, Chris or Marco has an opinion, I'd love to hear it. I think that for next meeting, we'll still do 13 UTC, but we can bring it up in the hour after breakout rooms and, and see if we can reach consensus okay. there to reach 14 UTC next meeting, uh, or, two, or two weeks from now, I think would be the best way to do it. Absolutely. Dan, before we leave, we have a tradition here at 3210, you remember? Okay. Yes, so Chris also said do you want to do this? Too. Okay. At 3210, we say, go with and fractal. Three, two, two one, one, zero. zero. Go, go with and fractal. And, fractal. <laughs> and at 3210, we will say, go yours. And after, go wax. Okay. First, okay. go yours. Three, <laughs> two, two, one, one zero. zero. Go Goyos. Goyos, sorry. Goyos. <laughs> Did you say it wrong? Go everyone, go, go Dan, go. go Extra, go Eric, go Sepiku, Sepiku, sorry, Sepiku. And <laughs> you will cut that, huh? Dan, no, sorry. No, go Sepiku good. <laughs> and go Mackinburg Sparrow. Go everyone. Yes, thank go you, everyone. everyone. Um, I'll also share some links in the chat too, in case uh, people want to check it out. But, but uh, if anyone wants to check out those uh, proposals for the agenda, uh, that's at eancreers.com slash agenda. I'll also share the Ian Discord and the Ian Record Telegram if you're not there already. Lots of discussions that we're uh, talking about all these proposals and lots of other things there. And also, everybody's welcome to join the Ian Town Halls every Sunday at 16 UTC. I'll share the playlist there. Um, but yeah, that's that. And I'll just say thanks, everybody. It's been a it's, it's been a great meeting. We, 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 we can also keep it going recording to it. Uh, we'll Don't keep forget it the EOS Fireside chat. Recording. Oh, EOS Fireside chat. Yeah, there's a whole bunch that's of 19 UTC. Jump uh, into the EOS Fireside chat and say there, 
that you love the fractal experiment without to say the fractally. You yes. have to, 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 and, to be very careful with what he says, what we say some, sometimes. But let's say that you are very interested about hidden fractal, the fractal paradigm, and all this stuff. Okay. Yes. And then also, too, uh, so the events that Joshua uh, hosts and Eric co hosts, and, and I join, uh, we, we do it most days, weekdays at 18 ETC. People can join that to learn more about fractally and the fractal process and so forth. I also have a page that I need to update, evencreators.com slash events, where people can see. Lots of events throughout the week as well. Um, but yeah, I, it, it's been great seeing be at this meeting. And uh, we'll do it again, same time next week. Maybe we'll change the time after that. And, and, and drink a little water later. before. Huh? Very important. Yes. That's very spicy, though. So, so drink some water. That is true. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> uh, any final words or should we stop the recording now? Well, it's okay. We are a bit between extra, me and you, and CPQ. Sorry, CPQ. CPQ. <laughs> Epicu and Mac Macin Bird, no Mac Bird, Mac N Bird Sparrow. Okay, sounds it's good. Macin Bird, it's Mac N Bird Sparrow. It's all about the the flights. He loves the flights. Oh, so, about the flight. I'm I'm, su yeah. I'm surprised, uh, Dan. Maybe you can comment on this too. I'm surprised Dwayne had like nothing to say today. Oh, thank you. Mac. He, he has understood my. my he said Dwayne. I don't think he said that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Dwayne, I saw him in the beginning of the meeting. I don't, but he left pretty early. I don't know where he went. Did he, or... did he leave pretty early? Was you in the breakout rooms? Because I mean, like, usually he's got something to say, you know? I'm like, no, I think this he was time in he my was, room. Uh... So he was talking. Oh, okay. Oh, was he? Uh, okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe he, I he, he was, uh, it seems to be that he was uh, like uh, in uh, Costa Rica, no? Well, he's been living in Costa Rica for years. I mean, he's living in Costa Rica yeah. for a while now. You can so. be where you are, wherever you want to be. Huh? He, he, he was distracted by the beach. Yeah, the fractal. Uh, yes, the fractal he's going wall. climbing jungle trees. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got monkeys attacking him from behind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I you hope it worked out well, Dwayne. His, uh, his other messages, there's always like crazy monkeys like behind him on his, uh, on his balcony. Oh, I haven't seen that. Uh, I know oh, a yeah, YouTube yeah, channel yeah, like, so. like exploring the jungle, which is pretty cool too. But yeah, on the uh, on the alien world fractally, fractal. The alien world fractally, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on the alien world fractal on Thursdays. He's very, he's very. Yeah, often I up cannot jump anymore. I am, him. I am so depressed. I cannot jo join anymore. This uh, alien world fractal. That's very. Uh, that was very fun. Uh, I, I was not able to join anymore because I have uh, so much things on the consulting side. I, I cannot be everywhere. Okay. Well, well, we well, say, well, so why are you right. here today to time, with Dancing cool. Joy? <laughs> I am here today with Dancing Joy because uh, first, uh, I love Dancing Joy. Secondly, uh, I love Eden Fractal. And it seems to be that uh, I, I love a lot Eden Fractal. And it seems to be that I love a lot Eden Fractal. And seems to be that I love Eden Fractal. <laughs> and there, I love and, it too. And to, your, to, your, to your point, to your point, there are there are many more people on this call on the, on this fractal than there are there. Sometimes the alien world fractal is just you know you know four what? or five of us you know so you, maybe be, this to, is more more stimulating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the alien world fractal had the biggest uh, week last week. There was like eighteen people yeah. there, so that was awesome, and lots of new years community members too. So that's also sixteen UTC Thursday tomorrow. So I encourage people to join yeah, that. But all, it's I'm nice to see they're I'm both growing together. Out. Yeah. Because that that kind of that kind of grew out like a, an there. organic conversation. Nice. You know, much more than the fractal. That was just kind of like a Thursday morning call that we all had, just to kind of like talk shit to each other. Excuse my language. Um, <laughs> that we all just kind of like got on to like you know. Um, you know, give each other a hard time. So I'm, gl I'm glad that, that that has expanded too. So I think between the two of these, it's a good example of how fractals can can expand. And so. Yeah, I agree. I and working together too. On an alien world fractal, we have spoke extra, me, and there was uh, J Jason Bourne. Jason Bourne? No, yeah, Jason. 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 Yeah. And yeah. there was also, uh, <laughs> there was also uh, Duen Philippi. We have spoke about four hours. We have hang out after the meeting. I remember yeah, very yeah. well. Yes, yes. yes. Many many, many if you times were not there, maybe we will have never the chance to speak for four hours. That was just incredible. <laughs> well, Jason, uh, Jason, but now, now I have to make me violence. <laughs> and I have to go. 
I have to go and I have to go to my uh, consulting to the to the centralized world and to to leave the hidden fractal world to go into okay into great time everybody yeah. Yeah, education thanks a lot Dan, for putting it together thank, thank you nice extra you. nice meeting you Spooku. uh thanks so much everybody and I'll stop the recording in five seconds five yeah I'll see you four. next week Three, two, one. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. See you into the other side.